Seeing that at 6.30, I'd right like on. to call to order um, a meeting of the Board of Selectmen uh, for Tuesday, June 8th, 2010, here at the Selectmen's Chambers at Town Hall. Uh, I just want to make sure that everybody understands that we're recording this, and it's actually live, so don't get nervous. Uh, it will be recorded, but if there's anybody who is uh, making a recording, um, a person wishing to do so must inform the chair. That's me. I assume nobody here is going to be making a recording other than Mr. Roser. Fair enough. Okay. Moving on, um, I'd act like to um, move a call to order and um, moving to the second item on the agenda, an acceptance of the agenda. So move, to, move to accept as amended. Second. Is there a second? Second. Fair enough. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Moving on to the third item on our agenda, and that is the uh, presentation of Employee Recognition Awards. <coughs> and to start with, this is uh, Employee Recognitions of Town Employees for the past, um, for 2009. Um, in essence, these are people who have committed themselves, ladies and gentlemen, for the town, uh, to the town to work in various departments. And um, we're going to start first with the Harbor Master uh, Department, and I'd like to have Mr. Uh, Harris, if he'd be so kind, to come down and um, present the awards to each recipient. Uh, the first recipient is for uh, five years of service to Jill A. West. I don't think she's here. And Miss West is not here. So we will make sure that she gets the award. Um, moving to the Department of Public Works, our first uh, department is Engineering uh, Division, and that's for James Montanari for 35 years of service. And Mr. Montanari is uh, not here also. So we're moving along quickly, folks. But I just he think... He just retired. I, he, he just retired, as I was just going to point out. And, but I, I want to point out also 35 years of service, which is pretty incredible uh, for dedication for an employee. And I know that everybody here is aspiring to, to do the same, at least I hope. Um, moving on to the uh, Public Grounds Division, I, I ask if Tom Grime is here. I know you're here, Tom. Tom, would you come on up for five years of service? And this is your five years of service. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. Our next uh, department that we'd like to honor is the Highway Division, and in particular, Mark. All right, Mark. Are you here? I, I'm going to have to butcher your last name. That's why I'm asking. Is it? How do you say it? Cundits. Mark is not here. All right. Mark is here for five years, and I'd like to congratulate Mark for his dedication for um, for the town. Um, I'd also like to ask George Mason. Is George here? Boy, we're <laughs> pretty bad, folks. No, that's okay. Thank you, Mike. Um, my, uh, George has also been here for five years, and we, we commend him for his service to the town. Christine Johnson is another recipient um, who is unable to make it here, and she's been here for, for 10 years. Uh, and again, I commend Christine for her dedication to the town. Uh, Bruce Johnston, Jr. is another individual who couldn't make it tonight, folks. Uh, and again, that's for 10 years' worth of service. Um, they're all the other person for the Celtics game. They are probably looking for the Celtics. <laughs> um, Thomas Smith. Is Mr. Smith here? Mr. Smith has been um, honored for 15 years of service, and so I again commend Mr. Smith for his dedication to the town and to the highway division. The other uh, division of the um, Department of Public Works is the water division. And I ask uh, William Jondro. Mr. Jondro. Uh, has also received um, five years worth of service, a five-year uh, an award. So we'll commend him for his service to the town. Uh, I know Mr. Dwight is here, and I saw him drive up. So is Mr. Uh, Michael Dwight here? <laughs> this is. This is for 25 years of service, Mr. Dwight. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Dwight. Thank you. Robert Sylvester. Mr. Sylvester, unfortunately, is unable to make it tonight, as you can tell. But Mr. Dwight is uh, Mr. Sylvester has served the town for 35 years. Again, recognition for, like Mr. Dwight, for long-term service to this town. 
Moving from the uh, water division, we're going to the uh, sewer division, and I ask if Leo uh, Fiore is here. Unfortunately, Mr. Fiore couldn't make it tonight, um, but we want to commend him for his 10 years of service uh, again to the town. Uh, moving into the inspectional services, and I know these two recipients are here because I can see them. Um, I asked Nicole Harris if she would come forward for her five years of service on the in <laughs> Nicole also uh, deals with the Zoning Board of Appeals, and she does an excellent job. The other person is the inspector himself, person who's been doing this for 15 years and also moonlights as the uh, advisor to the Zoning Board of Appeals. That's Neil Duggan. Mr. Duggan, thank you for 15 years. Neil, yeah, yeah. Uh, Moving on to the uh, Council on Aging, uh, is Ms. Johnston here? Well, Jill Johnston has served the Council on Aging for the past five years, and we also commend her for her service to the town. I move over to the Health Department. Pam, I know you're here. I saw you, Pam. <laughs> Pam Mullen, I ask you to come up for 10 years of your service, and we commend you for it. Thank you. Pam, Hi. thank you. Pam, thank you very much. Congratulations. Nicely done. The next department I'd like to honor is those people who've worked with the library. Uh, the first is Ann Zona. Is Ms. Zona here? Yep. Thank you. Uh, that's for five years of service, Ms. Zona. Come on up. Ann, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ms. Beal, are you here? Good. Ms. Beal, we'd like you to come on up for, uh, that's Alice Beal, for 15 years of service to the town, and thank you very much for that. <laughs> Alice, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Continue. Congratulations. Antonia Snee, come on up. Thank you for 15 years of service. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fifteen years. Yep. Well done. Thank you. Now, Ms. Meeker, for 20 years of service to the library. Kathy, thank you. Now moving over the, uh, to the fire department, um, is Sean Cashman here by chance? Mr. Cashman, Mr. Cashman uh, is for five years service and we commend him for the service to the town. Mr. Downing, is Mr. Jeffrey Downing here? I don't see him, but he could be in the hall. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. No, he couldn't make it, folks, but we commend Jeffrey for his five years of service. Uh, Liam O'Flaherty, is Mr. Flaherty here? Unfortunately, they're probably working, folks, but we commend Mr. Liam O'Flaherty for his five years of service. Thomas Doyle. Mr. Doyle is an individual, Thomas Doyle, for 10 years of service to the uh, town. Uh, Mr. Murphy, John Murphy. I didn't see Mr. Murphy, but uh, he's probably, probably still at the firehouse, so we commend Mr. Murphy for his 15 years of service to the fire, as well as other boards. And I don't see Mr. Reedy here. Um, happy birthday, Mr. Reedy. Um, we commend Mr. Reedy for his uh, service of 15 years. Mr. Donovan, why don't you come on down for your 20 years of service, and we commend you for it. Mr. Mark Donovan, folks. Mark, congratulations. congratulations. The other uh, 20 year um, this recipient is Mr. Elliott, Mr. Alfred Elliott. Come on down, I see you in the hall. Come on in. Thank you very much. Al, congratulations. Thank congratulations, you. Congratulations, Al. Hi, Al. Well done. Uh, Mr. Charles Hollis, 
if Mr. Hollis was here, he would uh, come up. He's also a 20-year recipient. We also um, ask for Mr. Michael Regan. Mr. Regan's here. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here. But again, another 20-year recipient, which we commend him for his service. Raymond Sambor, Jr. Mr. J uh, Sambor, come on up for 20 years of service to the town. We thank you. Hey, congratulations. Uh, the other is for Scott Hollis, who has served the town and the fire department for 25 years, and we commend him for his service. Also, Mr. Richard Kelly, uh, who has been here for 25 years, and we commend him for his service. Um, finally, uh, we, we thank Mr. Egan, who I know is here, Mr. David Egan, if you'd come up for 35 years to the town of Central <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the last department, um, it certainly won't be the least because we always um, appreciate the service of all the town employees, um, the police department. And in particular, we're looking for Mr. James Bowman, um, who unfortunately could not be here uh, this evening. He has had five years of service. We also thank Brian uh, McLaughlin, also an officer who has served the town for five years who could not be here. Um, Allison O'Neill uh, is the other uh, individual for five years service and we commend her for her dedication to the town. Uh, Rawson Lawrence uh, is an officer who has served the town for 20 years. Uh, unfortunately, uh, could not be here tonight. Um, Mr. Rooney, Lieutenant Rooney, John Rooney, who's been here for the town for 25 years. <laughs> And Officer William Whittier has also served the town for 25 years, and we commend him uh, for his service. Um, Teresa Duggan is another officer who uh, couldn't be here for 25 years of service, but again, we commend her. And finally, folks, certainly not least, uh, is the other and the final uh, person from the police department, and that is the chief, Brian Stewart, for 30 years of service. Thank you, Chief. That completes agenda item three, but I just want to say it's uh, an item that we've put on this year first time, and I have to say thank you, folks, and thank you for your support, your dedication to the town, and I know uh, it's not easy to come up here, but on the other hand, I think it's, it's ne necessary. It's something that the town should appreciate, the town people. And again, on behalf of the board, I thank you all for your service, your dedication, and um, here's to the next 5, 10, 15, 25, Mr. Egan, 35 <laughs> years of service. We appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the next item um, happens to be item number four, which is the walk-ins. And I will just let people kind of filter out for just a moment, folks. Seeing that there are no walk-ins, I will now move on to the uh, next agenda item, which is a... Yes. Okay, come on up. If you come up to the table, please, and identify your, your name and your address for the record. Janet Lacasse, 31 Townway Extension, Peggy Beach. Yes. Um, I'd like to thank the um, selection for beginning the clearing process of Townway Extension. Um, I know that that's been a difficult process and we've been told that it was not going to be cleared and we would like to thank the selectmen for moving forward to begin that clearing process. I assume that it was cleared under the emergency order which expires on June 11th and I'm just asking when the remainder of the clearing will be done for the residents to be able to gain access to their homes and for emergency services. Sure. 
Um, my understanding is that they have cleared about 300 feet from um, of townway extension where a lot of the boulders and the stones uh, as a result of the numerous storms since last fall have been cleared and as a result of last night's meeting at the conservation commission uh, there is a plan in place obviously going through a notice of intent uh, of the um, people who live there to clear um, in conjunction uh, with, with the town support to, to clear driveways if you will to those remaining homes um, as far as the timing goes, is, you're asking like when would the town do it? Is that what you're asking? Or? Well, the driveway access we know is under the notice of intent Correct. that, the, that the, the residents filed and we were approved last night. We're asking for the road though. We don't have a road yet. I guess I'm not clear as to what road we're talking. Are we talking about from? Whatever road you want to give us. Yeah. Okay. So the road is not clear. I'll, I'll defer to the uh, head of the DPW, the Department of Public Works, Al Bangert. Al, do you have? Yes, um, yesterday actually we cleared, we spent uh, $1,900 clearing uh, the right of way known as Town Way, the town's property, uh, by removing rubble uh, at the south end of the beach and removing any boulders along the pathway leading down the Town Way extension uh, that would impede the passage of uh, four wheel drive vehicles. Um, actually, $1,900 is. Uh, Almost precisely what we can allocate to that amount of road. There's 11. There's 1,065 feet there. We have 100. And, we have one dollar and 78 cents we can spend per foot of road. Um, we spent $1,900 of the $2,000, $2,050 budget we have for that road. Uh, the remaining money will be spent on putting up no parking signs so there'll be no parking on that road per se uh, in order to ensure that uh, vehicles can pass. It would be. Most likely necessary for vehicles with, uh, it would be advisable for four wheel drive vehicles to go down the road as opposed to uh, skittish two wheel drive vehicles. The, um, for perspective, uh, these are um, cottages built on the beach. Uh, access to them will be need to be by suitable vehicles. We've been down there with four wheel drive vehicles. You can't access it and emergency services can't access it. There's already deep ruts in what's been laid out that have been dug by vehicles trying to get down there and get back out. It's not accessible. Well, at this point, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not trying to dis disagree with you. Um, this is a walk-in, so we have five-minute limitation on the walk-in issue. Um, the head of the DPW has just indicated that they've cleared a way for people with four-wheel four-wheel drive vehicles to be able to access it. So the fire trucks and the police cars and the ambulances. Again, will be able as to I said, if the, the head of the DPW says the road's been clear, then obviously it's being cleared for the intent of health and safety. And so I defer to him. It may not be accessible for a two-wheel vehicle or a two-wheel, a you know, uh, not a four-wheel drive, but a, a, a regular car to access it. But for sufficiency for the purposes of health and safety, it's cleared. I'm, that's that's our answer. Okay. Thank you. Any other walk-ins, folks? Okay. Seeing none other, then I'd like to move on to the next uh, agenda item, which is our discussion. John, oh. John, there was one over on the left who rose her hand. Yes. Hi. Come on up to the podium. Tell us your name and your address. I'm of Piggity Beach Road, yeah. and I can speak to what Ms. Silkass just spoke to. I was just um, pulled out of Piggity Beach Road, uh, Town Extension. I have a um, Jeep Cherokee four-wheel drive that has never had a problem, and I was just bottomed out Mr. on the front road. So okay. just Good. an FYI. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. So let's move on to our next agenda item, which is a discussion vote one day wine and malt uh, beverage li uh, license for the WPA building, which is agenda item number five. And on behalf of the applicant, I believe um, Ms. Burbine, please come to the table if you could identify yourself, name and address. Ann Burbine, 10 Pentecris Road. I'm on the board of directors for the WPA building. Thank you very much. I see that you have a, um, you know, um, an application. Could you just briefly tell us what you're looking for with the WPA building? We're looking for a wine and malt license for June 25th, it's a Friday evening, for a business event from 5.30 to 7.30 to introduce businesses to the new 
WPA building. I, I, is it 5.30 to 7.30 or 8.30? Just so that we're clear. On 7.30. 7.30, okay. 7 and I see that you have uh, insurance. Yes, we have a rider. And you've submitted also um, a sketch of where you're going to be serving, what you're going to be looking at. Yes. Okay. Questions from the board? Mr. Vignani? And is this an open house for the North Situate? What is the actual event? The event is a bit, it's invitation. Um, hopefully it will go out to members of the Chamber of Commerce and we have a list of businesses as well just to introduce them to the building. And if you want to take a second, explain it is the Welcome Center. It's the Welcome Information Center in North Situate that um, CPA funds have worked on for the past year. Um, it's a beautiful building and you know we're in the process of showing it off and this is our first event. Right. Okay. Motion. Sure. Uh, any, um, any further discussion? No? no? Take a motion. Move the, move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a one-day wine and malt beverage license to the Situate Visitor Center 7 Henry Turner Bailey Road for Friday June 25th 2010 from 5 30 p.m. to 7 30 for tours for local businesses and a social event. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. And good Bye. luck. Uh, moving on to agenda item number six, uh, discussion vote for an outdoor entertainment permit for the Situate Harbor Yacht Club. Is there a uh, individual? Yep. Oh, there, there it comes. Oh, what timing? Good timing. <laughs> You're on. Come on up and sit in front, please. David, if you could identify yourself and your dress. David Friedman, 139 TAC Factory, Pond Drive. And it appears as though that you're looking for uh, an outdoor entertainment permit for music. Yes. Uh, the date you're looking for is June 12th, which is this Sunday, or this um, Saturday. Uh, the time that you're looking for is from 3 in the afternoon to 9 at night. Um, any discussion from the board? No questions? Dave, if you can just describe the event. Uh, it's a marina party. It would be a guy with a guitar out on the marina, uh, sort of an opening a party for the marina. Um, probably won't start till 4, probably won't go as far as 9, but just a bunch of people hanging out by their boats and being excited to start. And this is summer. an, I remember Frank Colpoys and everybody else yeah, over the years year. coming before this, right. so this is an annual event. Right. Right? And there's a rain date in the event that it rains, you're looking for Sunday, so, right? Yeah. Good motion. Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to the Situate Harbor Yacht Club 84 Jericho Road for a marina party to be held on Saturday, <coughs> June 12, 2010 with a rain date for Sunday, June 13, 2010 from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. With, with music to be provided by one performer playing amplified guitar. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Vignani seconding. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Have a okay. good time. Good luck. Uh, moving on to agenda item, agenda item number seven, um, meeting announcement, uh, the Water Resource Committee, uh, which is the NR, NSRWA, which is the North-South uh, River Water Association. Um, Mr. If you could tell us what's going on. <laughs> Mr. Murray. Waiting for my <laughs> last name there. I didn't know where we're going. Um, Yes, I'm going to give it to the clerk is what I was hesitating. Oh, I see. The clerk yeah, yeah, should yeah, be no, reading no. these things, but I'm giving you. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. No, I just wanted to bring to the board's attention, and most importantly to the public's attention as well, that um, as we all know, the Water Resource Committee and the Water Department has been working really hard for the last several years, along with um, some nonprofits and, and NGOs, to the, the whole water issue regarding modeling um, how water is going to be moving through the town in terms of the aquifers and groundwater and surface water and all this and bringing in the the, the water um, wells and conservation issues and all sorts of things like that and so they are going to be holding a public meeting um, and so the North and South Rivers Water Set Association and the Situate Water Resources Committee that's the committee chaired by Jeff Rosen is sponsoring a meeting to update citizens and town officials on the three major projects recently concluded that addressed water resources in the town of Situate. These projects address the current state of water resources and options for meeting the town's needs for both for drinking water as well as for habitat restoration. The projects include the evaluation of new water resources, the management of current water resources to restore herring runs, and the viability of the first Herringbrook habitat for restoration of fish migrations. This meeting will be held in the Situate Town Library meeting room on June 17th uh, from 7 to 9 p.m. And I encourage everybody to come and bring their friends.
Thank, thank you. you, Mr. Chair. That's very quick. Um, thank you. Moving on to our next agenda item, which is a discussion vote, Hawker Peddler's License for North Situate Farmers Market. Uh, actually, I just skipped one. I guess yeah. I did. I Folks, I'm sorry. I stand corrected. That's number nine. We'll get to that in just a minute. We're going to go to number eight, which is the Hawker Peddler's License for an ice cream vendor. Is and I'm going to butcher the name, folks. I'll tell you that right up front. Is Mustafa B. Alakala Taba here? Close enough. Saying it's that, that it's is. a renewal, isn't it, John? It is it's a renewal. It's not. No, it's not a renewal. No. It's new. It's nephew. Oh. nephew. All right. I'm going to ask to continue this um, and see if um, Mr. Alakala Talaba. Um, we'll show up later on. I'll, I'll postpone this and let's move on to the next agenda item. So we'll come back to this one. Um, now let's get to the Hawker Peddler's License for the North Sitchett Farmers Market. Is uh, Janine Perrette here? Yeah. Jenna. I'm sorry, Jenna. That's all right. If you kindly come on up and identify yourself. Jenna Perrette, 69 Gilson Road. Okay. And it looks as though that you're looking to get a Hawker Peddler's License for what kind of Things. What are you looking to do? Jenna um, Cakes. Oh, yes. Jenna Cakes. I'm Cupcakes. sorry. I missed that last night. I was going to mention that. Cakes. Okay. Hey, I'm all set to vote for you. So, <laughs> <laughs> discussion. If you're selling cakes, that's great. Motion. Are you going to do one at a time or all of them? I thought we uh, do one at a time, unless you want to do all three. Actually, you know, why don't we bring the other three up? Is Philip Edwards here? Uh, Mr. Edwards is not here. Okay. What about uh, Ralph Young? Mr. Young, come on up. If you could kindly identify yourself from where you live. My name is Ralph Young. I live at 91 Lincoln Street in Nahua. South Situate. That's great. And Mr. Uh, Young, you're looking to sell small plants and herbs. Herbs, right? No. That's what's listed? Vegetables and flowers. Vegetables and flowers. Okay. Very good. Um, all for that, too. Would uh, take a motion? Well, just want to discuss it for just to explain. So, Jenna is going to be selling pastries and cakes and stuff. Because Philip Edwards is selling berries, fruits, and strawberries. And Mr. Young is doing vegetables and fruits flowers. and flowers. Do you want to vote for Mr. Phil uh, Philip Edwards? I'm, I'm uncomfortable moving ahead on Philip Edwards if he's not here to uh, explain further. So, I think we could move ahead with the other two. Explain uh, what you're doing. He's selling, he's selling strawberries, strawberries and blueberries. And blueberries. Which I like. Actually, he lives on Beaver Dam Road. I'm like, yeah, Miss Miss Edwards had a medical appointment this afternoon. I I would have no problem about. It. I mean, you're talking about farmers markets, so the strawberries. All right, fine. I don't strongly feel one way or the other, but I just wanted to be consistent. You want a motion? I just, I, just I don't care, but if, if people feel. Yeah, like if I go tomorrow and he's there, I'd like to buy. Sure. Buy you want a motion, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. Move the board select and vote to grant Hawker Peddler's licenses to the following individuals. Jenna Perrett doing business as Jenna Cakes, Philip Edwards and Ralph Young to sell goods at the North Situate town-owned commuter rail parking lot in front of the WPA building from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Wednesdays until October 31st, 2010. These licenses have a temporary waiver of the 15-minute rule, Selectman's Policy Number 43-99, and are subject to inspection and conditions set by the Board of Health. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Folks, congratulations and thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Do we get like any piece of paper or anything? Uh, Kim. Yes. The selectman will sign up, sign your license after tonight's meeting and then you owe a $15 fee. We'll, our office will contact you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Mr. Can Young. I ask Ms. Dunn a question? We've, we've passed a lot of these lately. Are we getting to capacity or how? Does anyone have any idea how much space is there, available? There are a couple of people that oversee it, and they've um, encouraged these people to come forward. So, so we're not near. No. Uh, I know Mark Flaherty Lane, is. Lane is running it. I think she told me there's 18 and 19, 18 vendors maybe. Yeah. I don't know how many have gone That's before good. you. That's great. That's good. That's good size. Critical mass. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. All right, moving on um, to item agenda item number 10. It's a discussion vote entertainment license in its situate harbor. I am actually going to recuse myself, so I'm going to ask the uh, vice chair if he could just take this. That would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Uh, Lisa? Yes. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Good. 
outdoor entertainment. Why don't you explain what you're, what you'll outdoor be looking Outdoor and for. indoor, actually. Um, we've received numerous requests from our in guests to mm -hmm. have us provide such entertainment. Um, we have a lot of people, you know, staying there for weddings and things like that, that they want to have, you know, a cocktail hour or two um, before and to have us provide some entertainment for them. So, I mean, we've gotten all sorts of requests. So on my sheet, you'll see that I put pretty much everything because that's what we've been requested. Um, what I see more is probably, you know, one to two singers with guitars, acoustic, um, both inside and out. That's what I see the majority of, of <coughs> what we would probably like to provide. Tony? Um, yeah, I, in Radiance, I think it's great. I know it's not a huge space down there, so a few of the concerns that, that I have is the amplified bands. Right. I mean, you just said you were hoping for acoustical type stuff. I, an amplified right. band there, especially with the neighbors here last time when we had the discussions about the liquor license, that part concerns me. As well as, I was just speaking to Mr. Murray, um, the 12 a.m. time period on that, where I think we only had the liquor license going through 10, is that correct? Outside on the outside. patio. Yeah. Inside is 12. So would this band be inside or outside? It, in, well, we would like to have provide it outside and inside, but we would also, I mean, we have 29 rooms, you know, so we want to make sure that we're not disturbing, you know, our neighbors as well as our guests for the end. So we would want to put a time limit on it as well. Right. Um, you know, probably 9 o'clock, I would say. So we can change this till 9? Yeah, for, I mean, for the entertainment license. Well, this, it says you're requesting midnight. Am oh, I no, no, this right? I'm sorry. On there, I put the hours of operation for us. Okay. So but we can change this to 9 p.m.? License, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, I see. You're on the application, it says hours of operation, and that's, right. that's what got transferred to the suggested motion. What hours do you want the entertain? Are you requesting for the entertainment? I mean, I'd say 4, 4 p.m. to probably 4 to 9, okay. if we could be within that range. And on Sundays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturday, the same thing 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. So that would be like noon, noon to 9 p.m. I'm just asking. I'm just right. No, I know. I, it's, it's, we've been getting so many requests. So, I mean, if somebody comes in and they want to have somebody at 2 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon because they're son is getting married that day or you know what I mean right. that's why um, I was you could that's why I point out that rather than Monday through Wednesday from 4 to 9 Thursdays Fridays Saturdays Sundays perhaps starting at noon to get those afternoon weddings for you right yeah that would be great I mean if we could so if the, if the limit on any night is 9 o'clock yeah okay. that my concern is the later time not correct time. right so 12 to 9 is that reasonable for I, the board do you think uh, uh, the, the hours are fine. I have a little problem with the amplified music yeah, well again, that, yeah, that you brought up. So do you think the hours should be 12 to 9 p.m.? Is that fine with everyone if we, I make a motion that changes it to yeah, that? Yeah, 9 would be the, Late, the latest. Right, I think right, yeah. that, and that would be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Right, unless you think Sunday should be earlier than that. Sorry. Um, would that be able to, could we include the entire week until 9 p.m.? Yes, we are. Okay. What we're, well, we're not doing anything here right now. We're just trying to figure out what you want so we can figure out if that's acceptable right. or not. Um, we are tentatively revising this all on the fly here that Monday through Wednesday, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, from noon, to 9 p.m. That's what we would like. Okay. Now we can discuss whether we like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no, with all due respect, you know, I just wanted to make sure we understood what you were asking, yeah, and then absolutely. we can figure out if that's all right. And I think we should remove the, the amplified band portion of it. Uh, I, I, Joe. I, 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 go ahead. Uh, in, other, in other entertainment licenses, doesn't it say with this one person or two people, Kim? Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. And I know what you're doing, Lisa. I do the same thing. You want to open it and keep it open so right. you know you might have someone that does this, someone that does something entirely different. I, like Joe, I'm just sensitive of the neighbors, but you kind of answered 
my question earlier, you have 29 of them right, you know, up above. I can live with the hours. I just, like Tony had mentioned. The, Which one out? Which hours? The hours that um, Rick and right, Ed mentioned. Nine o'clock. Yes. Think. Doesn't mean you're going to necessarily have someone there until 9. You, you can. I think we, we haven't had in town great luck with uh, outdoor entertainment uh, over the years. The, the, the times we've tried it, it's resulted in pretty much the same problem at all times, and that's the neighbors in the immediate area uh, ending up complaining and uh, talking about you know noise and not being able to sleep and just disrupting the day. So we haven't had a great track history with 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 music outdoors, amplified music in particular, right. and that sets up a whole different. Right. <laughs> um, scenario because once we give and what we have to stress I think uh, yes, what we have to stress is that once we give a license like this it's out there forever I mean there's no turning around uh, three months and saying oh we want to take it back it's very very difficult to do that once we give it it's it's yours and we have to be so careful I think when we issue these uh, because to wish you an amplified, and this is not aimed at you at all, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, an amplified band could result in down the road having a rock band out there, you know, and that's that's the problem. So I agree with Tony. I think on the amplified band music, uh, I have a problem with that. You want a motion? One minute. Try and try. Try to motion. Uh, actually, can we discuss a little more sure. before we before we do? <coughs> I have mixed thoughts on the amplified band because I know you're you're. It's wedding music, and we've all been to wedding music with its pluses and minuses, most certainly. Um, amplified band. Some of them you wish were more amplified, and some of them you wish were just would get vaporized. Um, but I am concerned about the volume in the neighborhood. Is there a way you could qualify that down so we can talk about like a one or two person band? I'm not suggesting that's what we'd find collectively as a board more palatable, but I know I'd be more in favor of an amplified band if I knew it wasn't going to be six people up there just, you know, doing their very best um, Creedence Clearwater revival imitations, you know? Right, right. Um, I mean, I, I've only been requested, so I don't. You know, I don't know exactly what we, you know, having been given this, I want this particular band to come. Yeah, um, okay. It's what? just, you know, would you be able to provide that? Well, what that. you could always do is on a case by case basis, if there was a, okay. an amplified yeah. band, you could come before us. Um, I like that idea. Yeah. That's, right, that's you know, accurate, right? Specific date, you yeah. know, th this is what we're looking yeah. for. Similar to the yacht club, just doing it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. My, my other, I'm fine with that. The other point is that they're not holding wedding receptions right. there. This is right. just a small yeah. patio that's yeah, no, small. Yeah. So yeah. this is just a cocktail party with someone playing the violin or something, probably, or a guitar or something. Right. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm imagining. It's not a reception where you're going to have a 70s band rocking out. Well, my, I like the idea you just brought up. I'm, I'm fine with going through with, with these hours, holding off on the amplification aspect, but being very amenable to coming in on a case-by-case -case basis, particularly as we feel it out. Are there any neighbors here? No? Let me try a motion. Kim has. I don't, I don't know if you saw this in your notes, but I did want to bring to your attention that neither or the Millboard has outdoor entertainment. Yeah. And I will also tell you that a direct butter um, to the inn comes in on a yearly basis to our office um, to make sure of what TK O'Malley's entertainment license says mm -hmm. because they do not want outdoor entertainment yeah. of any kind. So I just thought I should share that piece with you. Um, a suggestion might be if if you don't mind me making this, is they do come in on a case-by-case -case basis for any type of outdoor entertainment. And then you could grant an indoor entertainment for whatever you mm -hmm. choose, but outdoor is... Um, Those are the problems I, I was referring to in the historically, you know, we've, we've, every time we've given it, we've it's come back to bite us, and that's... Could you live with that, Lisa? 
see where it goes. So it would be the same I, kind of thing where if. So basically, it's granted for inside yeah. the pub. Yeah. And then if we wanted something on the patio, it would be a case by case yes. basis? That would be. The only problem is in the summer, we don't always meet as frequently. And I'm going to imagine that your stuff isn't going to have a large lead time to plan. So we're not going to be calling these rush meetings for a. No, a but I would imagine you'd have. Two weeks lead time on just about any event that was scheduled. If there was a, I mean, scheduled event, would. and if you want, if you had a scheduled, and I'm just tossing this out, if you had uh, four events in the summer that you thought were going to uh, necessitate a outdoor <laughs> music, you could probably come in, Kim. Correct me if I'm wrong, in May or June, with the four events, you wouldn't have to come back four times. Right. Just yeah. give us four dates so four we dates probably and could. Exactly what we want. Yeah. Would we be okay then with if it's indoor? Are we fine with the amplified part being indoors? I am. That's much like what the Mill Wharf has. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Okay. I so you get the amplified. Well, the problem with that is it's right in a residential area. You know, the Mill Wharf is doesn't have as many residential abutters. For a discussion point. It, it, it's in, and I'll give you the scenario that will happen if if the amplifier <laughs> gets out of control, out of hand, if instead of being two, there's 12, uh, the neighbors are going to complain, and the establishment, and rightfully so, will point to the fact that they've got a uh, license for amplified music. <laughs> and our hands are somewhat tied at that, at that point because uh, we, gave, we gave the license out. So I agree with you, but I'd say I, I'm... I'm just drawn to it because it's indoors and they have their own people there as well, the 29 rooms. Yeah. So I think they have a, not that other establishments wouldn't have a vested interest to keep it under control, but these folks have a real vested interest to keep it under control because not only do they have residents, they've got, they've got um, paying customers. But no, but I'm, yeah, I'm not disagreeing. I'm not no, disagreeing with anything anybody says. It, you know, I think the layout is it's a, pe it's a pub with a patio, you know, the patio is really an extension of the yeah, pub. Yeah, yeah. So I imagine in the summer the doors are going to be open and it's really not going to be the mill wharf that's, you know, an enclosed entity. Mm -hmm. How about it? we do the Amplified on a case-by-case -case <coughs> basis yep. for, for at least one season and see how it... Yep, I'd go for that. Sean, what do you think? I mean, I understand somebody else has it. All right. I mean, what do you think? Uh, I, I, I can go. I can go either way. I, I'll be totally honest with you. But, but I would see. No, no one has a crystal ball. But I would. I could see a potential for a two to two here. So I think we need to come up with some consensus on this ahead of time. I just want to. Could you? Are you truly comfortable with with not amplified indoors and doing amplified on a case by case? Yes. Okay. Excuse me. If I can just add this, the nautical mile down in. Uh, had amplified music indoors only with windows and doors shut. Yep. Wow. In the license. That was that can be specified in the license. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that sounds hot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we want to close our. I meant windows. thermally. I don't mean in terms <laughs> of excitement. I think if everyone's in agreement uh, to try at least for this first season. Um, Everyone, including you, most importantly you probably, uh, that we do the amplified on a case-to-case -case basis. Give you, you know, the, the entertainment license till nine o'clock, and the, and if it, you know, if you find during this year that it, that it's uh, important to you to change that, you can come forward, and I think you know if it's worked so far, I don't think the board would have a great problem changing it. So, sure. that'd be my thought anyway. Norman. Some way down the line, it doesn't necessarily apply right now, but I think there has to be a definition of amplified music. Uh, are you talking about amplified instruments, right. or are you talking about amplified voices with unamplified instruments? Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Much too complicated for me, Norman. No, I see what you mean. And I, I know what you mean. Have the Absolutely. To carry forever. Yeah. No. And they have the ability to uh, radiate frequencies, low frequencies that go right through a house, right through a car, 
you, you've all been past these sub bases in people's cars, and all you can hear is the thump. I have one of those. And it goes. <laughs> <laughs> The lower frequencies will go through somebody's house even if they shut the windows and nothing you can do. But if you have unamplified instruments, you may need to amplify somewhat the voice if they're singing with it in order to be heard at all. Oh yeah, there's and those those frequencies from the voice never go through a house or a car or anything. There's a big never they never generate those frequencies. Yeah, and even more simplistically, there's a big difference between someone standing there in front of a microphone singing it with an with acoustic with an acoustic guitar, even an acoustic guitar that's amplified, versus a whole wedding band up there jamming out. So I understand your point. Yep. Yeah. Want me to try and make a motion? Try to make a motion. I think it's important to know what Tony mentioned earlier, that there's not going to be any wedding receptions. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, the hotel's just not large enough, I don't think, at the present time to do it. So right. this is for the occasional pre-wedding or post-wedding. Right, rehearsal and dinner service. Right, exactly. Yeah. All right. I'll make an effort. Um, move that the Board of Selectmen vote to grant an entertainment license to the Inn at Situate Harbor at 7 Beaver Dam Road for entertainment in the pub patio area. Entertainment will consist of acoustic guitar, singers, for, I don't think you want wedding, it could be any event, right? It's for events, uh, for the hours of operation, um, Monday through Wednesday from 4 to 9 p.m., 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. And we'll just leave the amplified stuff completely out. Yeah, and then as you need it. And you can come, come before us. Sure. But when you just said patio in there, we would have to request even acoustic. For the patio. We would have to make an additional request for that. No. No? No, because it said acoustic guitar. Acoustic patio pub area is indoors and outdoors, is my understanding. And the motion said, "Will entertainment will consist of acoustic guitar music." It should be acoustic music because it could be any instrument and singers. Okay. Further discussion from the board. From the floor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Have a great day. It's unanimous. Good luck. Thanks. Welcome back, Mr. Danny. Thank you, Mr. Norton. Um, I'd like to move back, if we could, gentlemen, to um, item number eight, which is the vote for a hawker peddler's license on the ice cream vendor. Uh, I noticed he showed up um, right around seven when we started. Uh, and this is, again, I'm sorry, I mispronounced your name, Mustafa Ala Kala. Uh, thank you very much. I, I apologize. Um, you're looking, this is the first time you're here for an ice cream vendor to be able to sell here in the town of Situ. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. Um, I assume you're aware that, you know, you can't sell in front of the various stores uh, around the town. Are you aware of that policy that we have here in the town? I agree with that. Uh, you agree? Okay. <laughs> you have to, because yeah. you can't sell within, yeah. I think it's, a, is it, a, well, Kim's gone. I think it's like 100, 150 feet. So you've got to make sure you adhere to that, okay? Yep. You haven't done it before. I've seen other people do it, and you can't do that, okay? The second thing I'd certainly encourage you is you've got to make sure that you abide by the speed limits. You're going into a lot of densely, I assume, neighborhoods. I'm not sure. Whereabouts are you looking to go into? What neighborhoods or where? I do in Quincy and Brentree. Quincy and Branch, but we're here in Situate. What are you looking to do around here? What, just all over the town or? Yeah, like in the street. Okay. I go to school in the morning. I do that part times. So. Okay. I just say that you got to make sure that you go slow because yeah. you've got kids coming, as you very well know. I know some other vendors sometimes speed off to try to get to another neighborhood before it's too late, but you've got to make sure of that, okay? Um, outside of that, um, I assume, is there, did you, insurance? Do you have insurance? Yeah, my truck. Yep. Yeah, I got insurance. Okay. Um, other can questions from the board? Yeah, can you describe what what do you what's your vehicle? What what is your intention? What, what do you want to do? No ice cream around. Do you have an ice cream truck? Yeah, ice cream truck. I don't think so. so you're gonna be playing the music? Exactly. And driving in the towns. And do you have any idea where you're gonna go? You're gonna go to the beaches, you're gonna go up and down residential streets, or you <coughs> Yeah, like you know, beach and street. I'm not really sure, so this is the first time I don't know. I'm not living here, I live in Saga, so exactly I'm going to do in the street, around the neighborhoods. 
So you're not going to park like in certain des areas and just sell out of the truck. You're going to be driving around the neighborhoods. Yeah, just driving around the neighborhoods. Okay. And then I think Sean was bringing up the t the hours from noon to seven. Is that Kim, what's the do typical? We, do Kim, do we have a a block around in a time that they don't? No, it actually is 12 to 7. All right, it is? Okay. Yes. I know there was discussion in the years past. All right, that's... And you have two, I'm sorry, I was out, but you have two licensed trucks right now in situation. And how many do we typically have a year? Just a couple? A couple, two or three. Two, Just two or three, two, two, yeah. Three at the most. I think we have had three before. Any other questions from the board? A motion? Mr. Murray. Uh, I'll, I'll give the yes. name a try. <laughs> Move the board select and vote to grant a hawker peddler's license to Mustafa B. Alka Tatabi, 5 Warden Street, Saugus, Mass, 01906, to sell ice cream from a truck in accordance with the selectman's policy number 43-99 and inspection by the Board of Health. Hours of operation from 12 noon to 7 p.m. June 9, 2010 to September 15, 2010. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. you got to sit down. We haven't voted yet. <laughs> Not done yet. Seat, okay. Um, discussion. Let's have more discussion. Any other, <laughs> any from the floor? Seeing none, then uh, I ask for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Now, just make sure that you, you read the... You say the, against. Uh, uh, any against? Aye. Okay. So it's a four to one, but you've got, you've got your permit. You've got to make sure that you read the policy, okay? If you haven't gotten it, you've got to get it from um, Ms. Donovan. And you've yeah. got to make sure that you're operating from 12 noon till 7 o'clock, okay, from these dates, all right? Mm -hmm. And um, good luck, all right? Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Now, moving on. Um, 720. On that one. We're on item 11. Uh, this is um, a discussion, Elevation Grant Guidelines and Elevation Grants Advisory Committee, uh, which is number 11. Um, Ms. Harbottle, would you like to come forward and talk to us about this? <coughs> you can bring every, everyone, um, if you could. I guess. I a little, Neil's happy. I can't bring any color. Okay. Please, if you could just briefly describe to us what you're looking to do here. I, I think it's self-explanatory, but if you could just describe not just to the board, but also the audience. Sure. Uh, as I'm sure the board is familiar, the town has had an active program for a number of years to give out elevation grants so people in the floodplain can raise their homes and protect them from flooding. The money comes from FEMA. It's passed through the state. It's administered locally, primarily by our office, by the planning, planning board office. We get a lot of help from, from Neil and also from Rosemary, Frank Snow, Vinnie Calicious. Um, those are the main people who are really actively involved with it. Over the past couple of years, there have been some changes to it. There are certain grants that are available for a 90% reimbursement of the cost of elevating. And that's started to increase the amount of money kind of flowing through the town. Um, there also is a change in this proposed uh, guidance, which would raise the, the basic amount people get from $40,000 to $50,000, which is based on the fact that it's been um, difficult for some people to make the 40000 go far enough. FEMA is changing some of the ways that they look at these grants. It used to be pretty open and shut that somebody would come into the town, get their grant, do their elevation, and that was that. But I think it's as a result of Hurricane Katrina that FEMA is getting very careful about some of the things that they do, and now they want to um, look at everything in term of, terms of a cost-benefit relationship. So each individual grant, they look at how much the federal government could save in, in claims versus how much is the cost of the grant, and they weigh and measure, and they, they go through much more of a process. So um, all of that is, is kind of funneled into this um, 
this guidance and one of the other things that's in here that's important for I think for you to know is that particularly with the 90 percent grants issues come up sometimes about what the estimates are that the grant is based on and making sure that everything is really squared away um, very fairly to everyone um, including the contractors and the homeowner and FEMA and the town and um, one of the things that um, FEMA wants that the town I think wants to spell out for people is that before these grants can be approved that people have to have three estimates they have to go with the lowest estimate unless there's some you know, reason that we all look at and we all agree to you know make sense for them not to go with the lowest estimate um, so so there are a lot of issues those are the main ones that I can think of basically you're looking to create a committee an advisory committee for elevation uh, elevation grants is what you're asking us to do right well so I think it's actually committee? two pieces um, okay. and that's that's one piece but um, the first piece would be um, to approve this guidance as something that comes from the town as a whole that's the guidelines that you've you've submitted to us yeah okay. so you, you're looking for basically for us to review the guidelines and then hopefully um, support it yeah. for guidelines for people who are in the floodplain and people who want to elevate it and, 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 and go these are basically guidelines for people to understand how they may qualify for FEMA funds uh, yeah, whether it's the $50,000 or 75% of the cost of the elevation work and, and in order to get those funds committee will be put together that's the second component component to help them hopefully achieve that is that what you're looking um, for yeah I think the committee is going to be more of kind of um, advisory because it's really up to FEMA to make the, the decisions on these um, so I just don't want people to get the idea that they have to be approved by a committee. Because yeah, I was going to ask that. Work that way exactly. I understand. I understand. Okay, so the, at least the, com the committee is not, it's just advisory to be able to support or help or gu give guidance to the people who come in to try to qualify under FEMA. Yeah, regulations. and if there are, you know, conflicts between um, what Neil and I are telling them and what, what they mm -hmm. want, then, you know, we can kind of air those in a committee. And who generated the guidelines? Is this in conjunction between you and Neil and Ms. Doby yeah. and also Frank Snow? Is that the four of you? Well, I guess pretty much me and Neil. Okay. Mr. Chair? Um, questions, yes. Yeah, I think this is really good to get these uh, codified and written down in one place. I see these a lot as they come through conservation because whenever some of this work gets done, it has to go through conservation. And, um, you know, there's locations and people are constantly getting referred to this website or that website. But it's really helpful to have this um, in one spot as a, as a policy or as guidelines. It's not, you know, a binding. It's very good that this word is guidelines. And it's going to help, in my opinion, Neil and, and, um, and Laura and others uh, be able to refer to this and give it to the people so they can see exactly what path they have to follow. So um, I think it's really good. And I also support the idea of having a, you know, a small committee just kind of keep an eye on things and, uh, as it moves forward. Mr. Vignani? Laura, how do we do this now? My concern in looking at this is are we creating a committee that we don't need to come to create another layer of bureaucracy. Uh, Neil sounds like he wants to say something. So. Oh, yeah, well, I, I, I oh. that because this program Mr. Roser, can you hear him? Can we get Mr. Uh, Duggan? Mr. Duggan, could you come up to the the table just so that we can, can hear you? Thanks. Sorry to interrupt. Us. This this program actually started in 1997, and, and from 19. 97 to 2006 was run out of my office and I want to name the people on the committee because this is a tremendous committee and a couple of them are coming back. Rosemary Doby, Roland Garneau did the accountant, Frank Snow, uh, I think it was the chair, and um, anybody else? Did I miss anybody, Rosemary? Yes, Vinny? <laughs> well, that was, that, that was the core group. Um, I've always acted as a liaison because I, I prefer, you know, in my official capacity to sure. be uh, separate from the committee. Um, I, I, I will tell you the amount of work that's involved. There's a lot of hand-holding. Uh, you need someone with expertise in building, uh, you know, Frank Snow sort. 
Rosemary Doby so dedicated to you know oceanfront issues, and uh, and the accountant was great too because he did all the accounting. He's a professional accountant. Um, it is also a matter of transparency, where uh, I think on the the ninety percent um, grant really got our attention because um, the um, it just seemed to lend itself to um, what you know was really needed to control the you know the costs because in, and there was a question of whose responsibility was it and um, we got that all straightened up this is kind of in response to that too that we need transparency and we need a committee so everybody you know people out there aren't saying oh how come he got it I didn't get it and I, I think that's really what this well my, is my question is it seems like they're all state guidelines you know and you're really just laying out the directions if you want to file for this this is what you have to do and it's a great informational piece but who who does it now who did it last year when somebody wanted to get it did you walk them through the process or did you walk them through the process pretty much, pretty much me since 2006 it's pretty much been across the hall and most of this is what we're doing now but there definitely are some refinements in here and there's some things that the state doesn't really tell you what to do um, this 90 percent program was something new that the state had never done before we were the first ones in the state to do it so, I, well my question is yeah. more do we need a committee I, I think this is great I think this is very informative I think it lays out what people have to do you gotta have three bids you gotta go with the lowest and blah 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 but do we need a group of four people to get together every time somebody wants to do one of these or not? That's my question. Well, I, I didn't really see them operating that way because that would, I think, make things more complicated for the, the applicant for these grants. Um, the way I saw it working is they would do everything pretty much what they're doing now. They would come in, talk to me. Um, I give them hopefully some idea looking at what their damage history is, if they're likely to get a grant, or if they probably should think that maybe they should find their, you know, their financing some other way. Um, I think the committee would come in when there were um, differences between what the applicant wants or what the, the person getting the grant wants and what Neil and I are telling them. For instance, these grants just pay for the elevation and not for somebody remodeling or doing new construction and we, we did have somebody that had to change around a bunch of stairways and add a little deck to accommodate the stairway and there was a lot of discussion and trips down to her house and back and forth with um, was that was that really necessary to the elevation or was that you know new and different I mean there, there are things that aren't really so cut and dried that have to be decided and sometimes it's just you know th those are the things where okay. having a builder would you know be a good thing I think I also think um, somebody you know who has close ties with the uh, the coastal residents is kind of a uh, you get the word out too and encourage people and uh, you know there's been different periods of time when we you know we've had eight projects going at once we absolutely needed the help other times we have one or two projects going but there's a, just a massive paperwork involved and Laura does the uh, most of that and uh, I don't know how she keeps so, track of it all. so this is really a, a facilitator this yeah. committee so to speak it's just to facilitate and assist in the process if there are a number of people to participate that's great they have the experience the the, the background if not, then obviously, then they, at least they're the guidelines to fall upon. Otherwise, what I'm hearing, it seems, is that if, um, yep. if it doesn't exist, then people are coming in either to you, Laura, or to you, Neil, and they're taking up time asking questions that ultimately, hopefully, a committee of people who, who are somewhat knowledgeable well, about it could at least not necessarily answer, but kind of get into more details with them. Is that kind of what I'm hearing? I mean, Mr. Norton? I, yeah. I just, I just, yeah. just suggest if we are going to have a committee, I think you people have worked with individuals who are well versed in all this, and I would like to see you come forward with a suggested sure. committee people you've worked with. I don't with. want to suggest that these are the people. They are Not the people necessarily, but I'd like to know who, yeah, who's been involved in this. Anybody wants yeah. to volunteer. Okay. Yeah. So tonight, what are you looking for? Just us to be able to be aware of this? It's informational, or are you looking for a vote or something on this? I'm, I'm, it sounds to me like two votes. Something sort of like, like a vote. Um, if you feel like you're, 
you're comfortable with these, these guidelines and you, you can vote on them tonight, that would be fantastic. Can I just point out if one thing? Because, and I think where the vote is important, um, the three detailed estimates, um, that they haven't been real clear about how we're supposed to monitor the cost. That's FEMA, if, you in mean? fact, who's responsible for the cost. And I think we, um, we, we were able to straighten that out, and we did it quite definitively not too long ago. And I think this, this came out of that, that, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, if it's, it's an auditor to five years down the road comes down and says, hey, where'd this money go, that we can account for it. And this is how we did it. This is the procedure. And to do it, I think, with the support of selectmen, uh, you know, just to, for the transparency, get it out there, it's public, anybody has a question with it, you know, we, we, we can say, well, this, this is the protocol we followed, uh, this is supported by the town, and... I, I have no problems with three estimates. I think that's your due diligence. Tricia, have you had a chance to review these or in discussion on this? Yes, I have. Uh, that's okay. why they're here. I absolutely support it for okay. all the reasons they said. Um, given the 90% reimbursement, some new issues bubbled up. And I think it's very that's important to both their points that we be very well done to treat them and then if there are disputes, the committee can jump in there with knowledge. All right. Other questions? Motion. Uh, question, comment? Yes, Mr. Murray. Uh, just very directly, to whom would this committee report? I'm not sure we're voting for a committee. I think well, I see. Well, I see. To say, but I'm well, curious to see. Yeah, I see, because I, I was planning on making, I was trying to help them along as, as much as possible. I was planning on making two motions. One would be the first to support the policy or the guidelines. That would be number one. And then I was going to hopefully follow it up with, you know, support the constitution of an elevation grants committee, and then um, and uh, request people send in applications of interest. So then we could have been a panel this group um, as soon as possible. And I know I, for one, would listen very, very carefully to what these two individuals suggest as to the people that we put on that committee and the types of people we put in that committee. And before I did that, though, it just occurred to me, I don't know who this committee answers to. <laughs> so, Does that answer to, to anybody? I mean, I, I don't think it's the answer to the I don't think it's certainly, I, I think that they, uh, any committee that we, we we're going to work with them. Yeah. I mean, it's not a matter of, you know, we don't have an agenda. It's just going to get as most. We put to the planner, the town planner. I mean, if, you, if we have to have some. I don't know. Do we have to? to? I don't even think we have to, but if we had to. <laughs> I would just say we're the ones who appoint it from there, you know, if it, okay. you know, well, you want there, no. they How report. Okay. guys appoint sure. them, then that gives them like a. Yeah, yeah there's a charge. Well, okay. I just want to ask one question. It was yeah. said earlier. If an applicant doesn't have to go through this committee, if it's if it's something they do and they're familiar with it, it's not something they have to do. The committee's there to help the residents that need it, correct? It's yeah. not another. Only if you want a grant. Yeah. Only if you want. So that's right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, when we get quotes, Neil is estimating the relative accuracy of them. That's not his job. <clears throat> we'll have. A question and want to know the approach, whatever, and go to this committee, and we have an expertise in that committee to enforce the decisions that have been made or make another recommendation. At the end of the day, on the board's behalf, I sign all the applications, I sign the reimbursement checks, so there's a, a good check and balance there. But um, to both their points, they want people to feel that you know they're not the be all and end all. There's this group of experts, if needed at some point based on quotes or based on, like Laura said, something that should or shouldn't be included, there's another remedy for them to go to. Um, if you could just remove. Yes, Mr. No, Mr. Pill, if you could kindly take your hat off, please. You're in the building. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Pill, if you got to identify yourself and your address. There's no vote on the agenda be a violation of the open meeting law. Could you tell us your address, sir, before you do? Norm Paley, what's your address? Thank you very much, Mr. Pilly. Go right ahead. The ability to take a vote is not on the agenda. I believe it would be a violation of the open meeting law to take a vote. Okay. That's not correct. Point right. Thank you very much, Mr. Pilly. Um, we appreciate your input. Um, having said that, though, motion. any other questions? Very motion. good. Motion, Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Murray. Or a series of motions. I'll give it a try here. Um, first, move the Board of Selectmen uh, approve the Town of Situate Elevation Grant Guidelines as provided to us in our packet today. 
Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Secondly, I would like to move that the Board of Selectmen um, establish an Elevation Grants Committee to provide advisory input in administration of the town's Elevation Grant Program. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you very much, you. folks. And then we will we will get the we'll be working on the final charge and the size of the committee and all that sort of stuff. I think well, they should a, get that. Well, they should get that. There's yeah. a suggested charge in here. Charge that we need to know how many people yeah. and all that stuff. And we'll so, Laura, committee. you can get us guidelines for the committee. What you think would be appropriate on there? Sure. And then we can actually. Okay. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. All right, moving on. I'd like to see if it's uh, with the permission of the board to take out of order the next agenda item, which is the Economic Development Committee, number 12. If I could, um, if that's okay with the board, I'd like to take the next one first. The next, yep. rather, not first. The next one. That happens to be the um, 13, the presentation <laughs> of Situa Chapter Stanford Children. Sure. Sure. Okay. Mr. Monger, do you mind? Holding off for the next. Thank you. I appreciate that. For the next Thank 45 you. minutes. Uh, Ms. Leiden, would you please come forward? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Monger. For the betterment of the Hatherley PTO, where I'm supposed to be right now, Mr. Monger has children at Hatherley, so he knows. Could you identi both identify yourselves, ladies? Yes. Barbara Leiden, 65 Hollett Street. Ooh. Whitney Lotion, 21 Jericho. Thank you. And. Um, this is regarding Stanford Children. What I'd like to do is I've had an opportunity to speak with at least with Ms. Leiden about this, and if you could just inform, we, we've received a number of uh, some information concerning Stanford Children. Um, would you please just give us a brief um, Some, summation, if you will? as to what you're looking to do. Is there a time limit on my brief? No, summation? there isn't. I only say that um, I understand you have to leave. So. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, first, thank you for giving us time in your agenda. Uh, Whitney and I, along with four other situate parents who are unable to join us tonight, are starting <coughs> excuse me, a local chapter of a national and statewide organization called Stand for Children. I'm going to read a little bit because I really don't want to mess this up. I want to make sure I say the right things. <laughs> so the local chapter will be called Stand Situate. We are here tonight <coughs> hopefully to give you some information and also ask for your support moving forward. I went to the school committee last night and presented there as well my brief summary and I'm pleased to report that they are supportive of this organization and offered their assistance as we move forward. <coughs> we would also like to get information out to the others in the community who sit down and watch this show religiously on Channel 10 and ask them to join us um, as we start recruiting new members for Stand for Children. So I will do my best to give this overview, and then I will turn it over to Whitney to give some specifics about what it means to become a Stand for Situate, um, a Stand Situate member. And uh, before I do that, I would like to explain what probably everyone's first question is, is why would we start another organization in Situate when we already have so many? Um, and before, so I'd just like to say we're starting this, and there will be a lot of good information at a kickoff event that we're having next week on Monday night at Gates Library from 7 to 8. So that's Monday, June 14th, Gates Library. And recognizing how busy everyone is this time of year with sports and recitals and all the other things, this is a one-hour meeting that is worth your time. Um, and the reason we're starting a new organization is because, uh, what, as you well know, myself and so many other parents, citizens, are concerned about the future of our school system, but also really the future of the town due to the budget constraints. Uh, anywhere you go and situate these days, whether it's a ball field, anywhere else, you know more than anyone as you get tackled <laughs> to, to discuss it. There's just concerns. What are we going to do? What can we do? What can we do here in situate? And really, people don't know what they can do at the local level. They certainly don't know what they can do at the state or national level to affect any sort of long-term and meaningful change. So situate's certainly not alone. You know, as you read the papers. And so as I was talking to my sister one day who lives in Mansfield and said, you know, God, we're in just tough straits there in Situate. She said, we're in the same situation in Mansfield. And she told me about this organization that came to Mansfield, Stand for Children, and have been working with them for over a year and the results that they're getting there as a result. So I looked, looked into it, went onto their website. The Stand for Children staff came out and met with myself and others. And I was quickly impressed with their mission and their strong track record of success. 
So I reached out to each of the six schools to see if others would be interested in starting this organization. And at the same time, Stan staff went and met with some of the SPS administrators, the principals, the assistant superintendent, as well as uh, Mr. Danahy. And so based on the support and the encouraging words of everyone we talked to, looking at the materials, talking to Stand, it became really clear that this was an organization that we wanted to align ourselves with to build some strength. So I'm pleased to say that after really only a month and a half of quick preparation, we have representatives from each of the six situate schools. Uh, myself and Whitney, Christina Benoit for Gates, Patty Koziel for the high school, Kristen Chapin, Cushing, and Michelle Dwyer for Wampatuck. So we really want to make sure we have a broad brush over all the different schools. So what is Stand for Children? Stand for Children has a presence at the national, state, and local level. It's a national organization with presence in six states currently. It was founded at the largest rally for children in U.S. history back in 1996 when 300,000 citizens came to Washington, D.C. for Stand for Children Day on June 1st. Rosa Parks was there and made a statement that challenged the nation to commit themselves to improving the lives of children, saying, if I can sit down for justice, you can stand up for children. So from there, STAND was a national organization, then a statewide chapter started. So STAND for Massachusetts is a nonprofit advocacy group that really focuses on helping all children get an excellent public education and the support they need to thrive. Since they were founded in Massachusetts in 2003, STAND Massachusetts staff have helped train hundreds of thousands of community leaders and mobilized tens of thousands of citizens to take action and be a voice of children in the political arena. Myself and others have all said, you know, inside the walls of Situate, we know we can come and we can make requests. Outside the walls of Situate, we don't know how to do that. And as you well know, the budget constraints that we're facing, you are given the budget you're given. You know, you can't do much more to increase that budget. Um, and so we really want to look outside the walls of Situate and have kind of a longer sustainable plan. So really the goal of Stand for Children nationally, statewide, and locally is all the same. It's to bring together concerned citizens to fight for improvements in public education by working with the people who make those important legislative decisions. It's really important though as, you, as we talk about education and schools and things that anyone watching and even yourselves here recognize that while it's children related, the things that STAND advocates for and they lobby for, these big ticket items like Chapter 70 funding, as well as health insurance reform in municipalities and really progressive tax reforms, in doing so they help every citizen, whether it's a parent of a child or anyone. As you know, the budget is going to be split 70-30 or 60-40. If we have savings on one side, that savings is shared back with the town. So we really don't view this as a parent group, we view this as a citizen group for Situate. So with that, I will turn it over to Whitney to say what a Stand for Situate member. Okay, and just to add on to what Barbara was saying, we're working really hard and so is the Stand representative that we've been um, in t contact with to get educators and administrators yes. to be an active part of our group as well as the citizens. It needs to all work together. Um, so Stand Situate, um, membership does not mean that they have to attend meetings, be part of committees or do fundraising, which is what a lot of the, the parents that are actively involved right now are doing and the different things that they're participating in. Um, it does mean that they pledge their support to the mission of Stand for Children. Um, as a local chapter, what I think is really cool is we get to set our own agenda. We see what is going on nationally and we get to pick and choose what works for us and those are the things we fight for. That really appealed to me. Um, so what we're trying to do is the kickoff meeting is next Monday, get people um, informed about what STAND is, try and get some membership, um, build a chapter, and over the next three to six months set an agenda for what our local chapter is going to stand for. Um, all members are asked to make a minimum financial contribution to help pay for the STAND Massachusetts and STAND for Children national staff. The contribution can be made as a monthly um, sustaining member, which is as low as $5 a month, or as a one-time annual membership fee, which is as low as $25 a year. Um, we hope that all of our members sign on to be voting members as well. Um, this means that they commit to staying informed and take small actions on behalf of Stan Mass and Stan Situate. It might be as simple as sending a scripted email to a state legislature about something that our local group has chosen to 
um, to stand behind. Right. Stand, stand, stand. I know. Um, and, and folks could do things like attend rallies at the State House as well. So that's just a brief overview of what it's about. And when the stand staff came, they said, you know, can you imagine some of the things that they've been able to do? You guys have that in your packet. You know, some of these legislators are getting 5,000 postcards or 5,000 emails mm -hmm. from the stand members that all say we are behind this initiative and it has a voice. They actually have people working at the State House two days a week meeting with these folks. So I happened to be in Boston on a trail meeting a couple of weeks ago and Jim Cantwell was there and I said, hey, we're thinking of starting this new organization. It's called Stand for Children. I don't know if you've heard of them. He said, I've heard of them and you know, we as legislators have a general respect for what they do because they really only go after the things that are reasonable. You know, it's not a vigilante group that are saying, give us more, give us, it's, you know, reasonable requests. So for instance, right now there's that um, race to the top funding that's everyone's racing for and Massachusetts is starting to get behind and they're saying, hey, you know, Situate is actually not position to get a lot of, or, you know, overall situate would not get a lot of that funding, even if Massachusetts gets it, because it's based on the Title I uh, formula. So they're saying, hey, we'd still love for you to stand behind that, but that doesn't have to be one of your big agenda items. Your agenda items could be more health care, municipality reform or something. So what Whitney, Whitney said is true, is they really give you a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. Questions from the board? Not really. This is a, uh, thank you. Thank you both. Uh, I don't. I, th I think what you're looking for is just a, uh, support. an endorsement. I suppose would that be the best word of support? Membership yeah. has its privileges. So. <laughs> 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 We're not going to pressure you tonight or anything, Joe. But <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, but I certainly support the concept and the idea. And Thank you, Mr. Fignani. Yeah, the only thing I was going to add is, you know, what were you looking for? And uh, it seems to me that you think that this organization has more influence at a state or federal level as opposed to our previous groups, which were, yes, for situate or PTO groups or these types right. of things that are fighting the fight locally. Right. So I think you've had a, a forum to, to uh, tell people about it, and, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thanks. Thank you very much. And Monday, what time is it Monday again? 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock at Gates Baseline to 8 o'clock. One hour. There we go. And we encourage people to come. If there's, there is um, babysitting provided, and the reason being, two members, two voices are louder than one. So if we have, you know, in situate, if we end up having 300 members, you know, yourself and your spouse, that is a very loud voice for people Thank to hear. Thank you. Thank you very much. I agree. Thank you. Right, now you can get off to. Sorry to interrupt. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you. All right, moving back, if we could, to um, item number 12, a discussion concerning the Economic Development Committee. Um, Mr. Monger, would you like to come forward at all? Uh, you'd like to, Absolutely, if you wouldn't mind. Um, I just wanted to, this was some, an agenda item that I had put on. I'd spoken with Mr. Daniel Monger, who is a um, planning board member. Um, he had forwarded to me some emails concerning the possibility of an Economic Development Committee. And in the process, he had given some some thoughts um, about it, as well as um, some input from other towns that have put together what's called the Development and Industrial Council. Uh, the town of Situate has adopted it apparently back in the eight, early 60s. Um, in any event, it has not been utilized. But uh, Mr. Monger had, had emailed over, and which I provided to all the board members, um, some of the purposes that the committee could do, um, some of which I, I'll just read out, was to study and recommend and implement changes maybe to the town's physical and regulatory environment, uh, to pro propose initiatives as appropriate in order to enhance and increase the town's long-term property tax basis. And if I'm reading that correctly, it's basically to go back and take a look at the various um, areas that we've, we've taxed and to see if there are other areas, maybe business areas that could be augmented or increased um, that have maybe looked at in the past that maybe the town has said no and maybe the town has decided to maybe relook at this and revisit it, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, another area you were looking at was to review and study the economic development aspects of certain areas, one of which was the economic development section of the town's master plan from 2000. Right. Um, another area was the final report of the town, uh, the Situate Harbor Village Center uh, report, which was from 2002, to go back and take a look at this area and to see whether or not the proposal from eight years ago, whether it's working and whether this committee should take a look at it and to try to revisit it. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, 
There's also the Greenbush Planning and Streetscape Study from 2003 that you're also looking at, as well as the North Situate Planning and Streets, uh, Streetscape uh, Study from 2003. Um, other ideas? And that's just... Uh, yes. I mean, there are a number of issues to look at. I mean, I think the basis for the idea really is to help the town have a group, sort of a think tank that is focused on the revenue side of the town, which as all of you know, roughly 80% of all the town's revenue comes through property taxes. Um, there have been a lot of studies done, Situate Harbor, Greenbush, uh, North Situate over the years. There's an economic development piece to the town's master plan. All great studies. I don't feel like there's been enough focus on some of the implementation of those and also uh, since the Greenbush line has come to town, uh, I think things have changed a little bit. Um, other towns have committees. I know Hingham has an active committee. Um, I, I've watched some of the activities of towns surrounding Situate such as uh, Quincy, uh, Marshfield, um, Hingham with the shipyard project. Um, not that anything of that magnitude would fit in situate, but um, there have been active committees in other towns that have, uh, you know, brought business to the town, enhanced the local business community, and ultimately enhanced the, the property tax base, whether that's commercial or residential, I don't know. Um, the town did adopt, uh, there's a provision in the Mass General Laws, uh, Chapter 40D, that allows towns to adopt an, an industrial uh, development committee. Um, I looked at a few different models around the state, what other towns are using. There's, there's one up in Salem called the Salem Main Streets Program, which is sort of a quasi-public group. Some do it privately, some do it publicly. Uh, but the town has already adopted uh, the act back in 1960, the in Industrial and Development Commission. It's just been inactive. There's been a number of towns in the past year <laughs> that have, uh, you know, reinstituted those for the exact reason that, you know, we're facing the revenue issues. Um, it would have been nice had it, you know, been in place all the year, years now and we've got all the revenue now, but um, you've got to start somewhere and uh, it's obviously a, a, a long-term proposition to study these issues, um, but I think it's critically important for the town to look at. And I know there's a lot of great talent in town that would be great on this type of a committee. It would be an advisory committee to the selectmen, um, working in cooperation with the planning board and, you know, all the other committees. All right. And all, all that you're looking for tonight is basically just to, um, not necessarily to put that together from us, but just a kind of informational for the board to take a look at, and then somebody from our board would touch base with the planning board and then see whether or not we could formulate a committee in the future. Absolutely. I think it's at this point just exploring the idea of it and uh, seeing what shape that committee might take and, and how that would work. Questions from the board? Sounds excellent, excellent idea. Yeah. Mr. Harris? Nope. Just one quick comment. I think it's a great idea. You know, anytime we can get brainstorming going on, just for your information and other information, the selectmen meet every year and do kind of do that kind of brainstorming session. Trisha got us together, I don't even know, several months ago, I guess. Um, and we had paper up all over the wall and we're writing and trying to do the same thing. So I think it's a great idea because the times, financial times aren't going to get any, any easier in the short term. That's great. Yeah. Mr. Murray? Yeah, I agree. This is wonderful. This is going to be really great. I absolutely agree with you. You say there's a lot of resources and talented individuals in town and town hall that we can put together on this. Um, I will just put a plug in. I did read what Hingham is doing and um, with this very helpful information you provided. Um, and they mentioned quite prominently the harbor master and the, and the fact that they're reconstituting and taking a look at their harbor. Yes. And our harbor, in addition to being aesthetic and so on, supports a lot of business. Absolutely. I mean, and not just people, but I mean real hardcore business. Fuel trucks, ice trucks, services, people supplying things. I mean, it's big stuff. So when you're putting this together and thinking this through, um, you should talk to some people in waterways um, and uh, Mark Patterson certainly as well. Yeah, absolutely. Mark was an inspiration partially for this, I know, with the harbor walk that he's adding there. Yep. And there's a lot of projects I think the town could look at like that with a committee yep. that's solely focused on yep. enhancing the business community. And uh, Situate Harbor certainly is the heart of the community, I think, and has uh, some of the, the best possibilities long term, not just for business, but really for the image of the town. and. Uh, you know, the appeal is an amenity to the residents and, and all of that. I, I, agree, I agree with that, certainly, but also don't get distracted by that because there's a lot of other opportunity elsewhere yes. that we need to start looking at non-harbor, um, you know, as well. I just wanted to make sure that the harbor didn't oh, get no, lost I, in the shuffle. No, I agree. Yes. There's a lot of things I, I would 
think the committee could look at a sort of a, a clean slate and really look at everything Bingo. and not just solely stick to what's been planned already but really take a fresh look at all these issues yeah just so um, I know that the Planning Board is looking for somebody from the Board of Selectmen to to go if, if it would be the permission of the board I'd like to be that person to go touch base with them if that's acceptable sure. to the rest of fantastic the chalk that up for another meeting that my wife will appreciate um, <laughs> all right thank you mr. Monk. I thank appreciate you very that much. very much thank you moving on to our next one let's go to number 14 a discussion and vote uh, special mm -hmm. events permit for the MS Cape Cod getaway and if you could identify yourself sir uh, Drew Davis from the MS Society thank you mr. Davis now it's my understanding that you're looking to have on June 26 which is the um, is that a Saturday? It is. Okay. From 8 a.m. till 12 p.m., you're looking to be able to utilize the town um, for a, a bike. Is it yes, a bike charity race? bike. A charity ride, bike yes. bike. That's going to come down. Uh, I looked at your, basically come down, <coughs> Border Street, um, cross over onto Gannett Road, and I think through Hollett, and then from Hollett um, back up across. Is it down First Par or down um, uh, uh, Country first Way to First Parish, first parish yep. and then you're going to shoot across 3A, 3A, mm -hmm. and then into uh, over towards um, down 3A to Marshfield. Yep. Is that it? Yes. And um, <clears throat> have you is situate the first town you've got the approval for, or have you gotten situate the last town that you're looking for approval? Situate is the last town. Last town. Um, and everyone else is approved, I assume. Correct. Yes. And this is the same route that we've done in past years. Is this the f this, this is, is the twenty sixth year that we've done? It. Is this the first time through Situate, or is it? No, probably. Before? I've been there two years, and I've ridden it two years before that. It's at least six years that six we've come through Situate. Yeah. Um, and we do have um, five police details along the five and a half mile route that'll be through Situate. Questions from the board? Typically, how many riders? Uh, last year we had 1,850. This year we're bumped up a little bit, so we'll have about 2,000. But that is spread out over that four-hour time period. And we, we really expect, realistically, the first rider should hit situated at about 8.30, and the last one should clear it, I would think, around 11 o'clock. But I know that the, the details are four hours long, so we'll leave them in place. Uh, as long as there are riders out there. Just going to caution you. Yeah. We had a bike race uh, last year during on a Saturday. Of course, it was at a different location, and um, it, it created a lot of. Uh, no, it was another, but it created a lot of um, some logistical problems. Um, I, 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 that's why I asked how many years has this been sure. through Situate. Yeah. And, um, and I, first I did time speak it, with so. the, the police department just the other day to add two additional details. Okay. I was going to ask that. That was my question. question. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. And, and they, they were they were good with it, but I'll, I'll double check with them again. Okay. Mr. Harris, it was true, right? Yes. What is the protocol? Someone it must have been Mr. Stewart, or maybe it was um, Chief Judge. As far as bike riding, two, three, four. You know, I mean. They just you seem to bike riders on the road. That's correct. Uh, they have to follow the same state laws as motor vehicles. But but as far as you know, single file to three to or four. Two abreast is the max that they can ride. They can they they can ride that under state law. And we try to keep them. We give a safety speech before the start of it. We also have SAG vehicles that work the event as well. What's that? Stag uh, vehicles uh, yeah, that are driving on? They're they're basically um, not first aid, but it, it stands for uh, um, uh, kind of. They come along and they'll they'll check for riders if they're in trouble, if they need uh, a repair or anything like that. And we've got them on in, uh, on motorcycles and in cars. And if they see riders bunching up or riding more than single file, they do give them a, a suggestion of single up, um, just to make sure that traffic does flow. That's what I hear mostly is yeah. you know that just accidents. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Absolutely, but. Again, I think what works for us is because um, the length of the ride, it naturally stretches Special. out. Yeah, so you really don't get large clumps of cyclists uh, riding together. You know, Especially you when they get to such by Correct. the time they get here. Right. Correct. Right. Are Benham. there any roads that are going to be closed? No. So nothing will be closed at no. all. It'll just be, I mean, there was one just last weekend going down 3A. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a Saturday morning. There's a lot going on in Understood. town, and you're coming right through all the the crossing areas where right. people are trying to get to fields and get to yep. churches and events and stuff. So it's and I believe station. we do have details at 
you know, the, the critical junctures. I asked that, your, how long has this gone through the town? I mm -hmm. haven't heard any problems regarding it. Sure. Uh, and that's why I'm being a little anticipatory here. Um, so hopefully whatever's done in the past, it's worked. Yeah. And, so um, worry. Right. So I think just, just a comment, you know, I think a lot of times we, we, we hear not only in this particular event, but in all others become uh, before us. And we're fortunate that Situate is a town that people, for whatever reason, the scenery or the mm -hmm. logistics like to come through. Uh, we hear a lot of problems, but I think we have to also give credit to the to the organizers of these events who raise tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars for, for very uh, worthy charities, in this case, MS. And I, sometimes I think that goes on, uh, overlooked by, by a lot of us. Thank you. So I, I thank you for putting the effort, the time and effort into raising these money to help uh, these very worthy causes. Motion. Motion, please. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a special events permit for MS Cape Cod Getaway for June 26, 2010 from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. according to all conditions set by the Town of Situate Departments and the Town Administrator and pending receipt of insurance binder and special events permit fee? So second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All, uh, uh, any discussion? Further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you, Thank Mr. Thank you Davis. very much. We appreciate Thank it. You. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Um, just looking out in the hallway, it looks pretty dark. Did somebody turn the lights off out there? Is it? Do they go off? I'm, I just don't want anybody to turn, fall. To lock the doors? <laughs> well, the doors they can lock. I just want to make sure the lights are on. Um, once our um, cameraman comes Motion back, folks, there we go. We'll move on to the next item. The next <laughs> item is a um, special events permit concerning Heritage Days. And on behalf of the applicant, Ms. Oliver. Please come on up. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Again, likewise. Maria Oliver, oh. 71 Grove Street. Thank you very much, Ms. Oliver. Yes. Obviously, I think the board is well versed in what is Heritage Days. Um, it's been on for a number of years, and you're here on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce to put together. That is correct. As a subcommittee, um, the Heritage Days, and you filed an application. Yes, did. And the date of it looks like it's Friday, August 6, 2010, through Sunday, August 8, 2010. Right? Okay. Um, briefly, would you like to just ask the board what you're seeking? Well, we're seeking uh, the use of Front Street, Cole Parkway, blocking off the streets early in the morning for the crafters to set up and the amusements in Cole Parkway the way they've been in the past. I mean, in general, the same general footprint that we've had in the past. Any, there's no, are you looking for any no. changes by comparison to last year or the year before? Not re no, no, it's okay. the same, same general footprint. Discussion from the board. Yes, well, to start it off, I you know, we have we have one uh, situation here that I think is, has to be dealt with separately, and that's the entertainment and music because that's been brought to our attention. So I uh, I want to just bring that up and, and, and put it on the table right away. Uh, I don't think I personally have any problem with with uh, Heritage Days as it was just uh, laid out to us, pretty much the same as in past years. However, having said that, we do have a very strong suggestion from the, both the police and the fire department's uh, chiefs that uh, the music aspect of it not go forward as it has in the past. So there it lies. There's my, my, my dilemma, I guess, if that's the, the, the best word. Uh, I, I certainly am not going to, to uh, disagree or vote uh, against the wishes of the two chief public safety officers in town. So I think, Mr. Chairman, we may want to take this in two parts. Two okay. parts. One, Heritage Days, as far as the street closings, uh, Etc. is concerned. <coughs> Second, the entertainment of the music portion of it. That's just my suggestion. 
How does the rest of the board feel about that? That seems to be the main sticking point. Um, I, I agree completely in theory with that, but what I'm my only concern is is I agree with you about fire, I mean obviously fire and police have great reservations. Do they have reservations with the music venue because of its size or because it's blocking off the street? So if, it's, if it's because it's blocking off the street, I don't know how we can approve, you know, the other part of Heritage Day is blocking off the street. You That's my only to, point. You'd have yeah. to ask the Chiefs that. I think that they uh, feel with the other part, and I don't know, I, I, I don't, I hesitate even speaking for them, but I think they feel that with the rest of Heritage Days, that they can get emergency vehicles in there, but with the band stand, etc. Yeah, it goes right across. Yeah, it goes right across. I'm, and I'm not speaking farther than that. And probably the people that are drawn yeah. to it. I mean, so I'm, yeah. I'm fine approving yeah. Yeah. everything else, yeah. but I just want to make sure yeah. that we word I it right think that's, so we don't. Th that's their objection. Yeah, Mr. Harris. Uh, do you have commitments? This is last year's commitments to, from the vendors here. Do you have commitments from 2010? We are, we're sitting on about 80 right now. Where would Heritage Days be if the music wasn't there? These people expect a certain crowd or a certain number of people if the weather is permitting. That's true. So I come from out of town, set up my booth. The crowd is not there. Well, I, that's, but, but that's, I, that's, a, that's a very okay, good, so these good people point that, that I, I was not aware of until this afternoon about exactly um, what the two chiefs had to say you I spoke to you one weren't yesterday. I, spoke to, I spoke to one today no I I no no you you're telling me you weren't sure how the chiefs felt about the music until not like music? that no absolutely not no I was no. chairman three years ago and, and it was no. a concern and it was a concern then I mean I, I agree with what Joe said earlier I mean as much as I might enjoy the music and and so forth and and I hear the people that come into town if if in fact there is an emergency and they can't get to somebody it's you know I mean there are experts that we depend on what does the chamber what would the chamber do if the music wasn't part of this program well, would, would have to regroup I mean I don't have because as I say I I spoke with Chief Stewart yesterday and I spoke with Chief Judge today so, and, uh, you know, I don't want to say so-and-so said this, so-and-so said that. No, but I will but say. I didn't hear exactly the same thing from each one. So. I, I don't think it's a question of whether the music would, would be at Heritage Days. It's whether it would be blocking Front Street. Yep. I think it's really finding a, no, a new locale for it, w whether it's on Cole Parkway or if it's on one of the streets going up off of Front Street. I think that's what the investigation has to be made to see where else you can put it, because both of the safety offers don't like it blocking Front Street. Or it could be done without blocking Front Street, on Front Street, but without right. blocking Front Street, something. Well, the stage is pretty encompassing. I mean, it literally t it, it, it blocks the whole street, and it's immovable. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would guess that's, that's their concern. I mean, the little booths could be moved if you had to, I imagine. But we don't want to take that attraction away and turn Front Street into, I mean, Heritage Day is into a smaller event. I think it's really just moving the stage somewhere else, is my sense. Well, there, was, there was discussion to bring it out in Cole Parkway in, in the years past. You know, and the more I thought about that, I mean, you've got the, the carnival. You only have so many weekends for those people that, you know, have boats. And I... I Depending upon who the names are, I think if you put it out in Cole Parkway, and let's say let's say the boaters weren't there, and you had the right names come into town, you would fill Cole Parkway. You think there's a lot of people on Front Street? Yeah, Gary gets good good acts. If I may, Mr. Chairman, I don't think it's our responsibility to find a location. We've no, had this conversation. You said three years, or you said three years. I think it's for, for five or six or seven years about about the music, about the problems, and every year during those past four or five years it's been the same conversation all right we'll grant the permits everything will be the same however we'd like you guys to have a debriefing meeting afterwards to, to come up with some solution to this and once again 
with all due respect, not, and I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, here we are again, exact same situation, 2010. We're here with the same problem we had in 2009, the same problem we had in 2008, the same problem we had in 2007. It's, it's got to stop, especially when we have the, the strong recommendations from the chiefs. I, I don't know what else to do. I mean, it's, it's just, uh, I don't think it's our obligation to find some other place. It's somewhat your obligation to find a place if the chiefs won't allow it. Enough said. How about this? Would you have, um, certainly we can, we can address the issue with the vendors. Okay. Mm -hmm. so that's acceptable. And then uh, why don't we do this, um, have an opportunity, why don't you speak with both Chase and um, see if you can come up with some solution and, um, and we'll see what, what we can do from there. I, I agree with that and my, I understand that the, the nature of the comments that we get back from all departments, not just police and fire, but is by nature short. Um, I would be interested when this comes back, or assuming it comes back at some point. I mean, we, we have comments here that says, we're not approving until the music venue is relocated off of Front Street. Um, I'd be interested because there has been improvement when three years ago or four years ago, the stage, Jerry's stage was set up and it was, it was blocking half of whatever the orthogonal street is. Is it Allen Street or is it the one over? Is it Allen Street? Yeah, okay. And then last year or two years ago, it was moved south, so it wasn't blocking that cross street at all. And, and at the time, the chief said that that was a, a, a big improvement. And, um, and because then they said they could get, they could access that one block of Front Street south of the stage by coming in the further south cross street, and then they could actually get behind the stage and, and north of the stage by coming down Allen. And so I thought that was essentially the problem solved, at least for that year. And so, and I'm not disagreeing with the chiefs because they are, they are our public safety officers and I listen to exactly what they say because I'm not gonna sign off on something unless they do. But the other comments are, on here are, it was extremely congested, sidewalks blocked, creating dangerous situations in the event of medical emergency, disturbance, fights, et cetera. That to me is, is independent of the music. So I kind of want to make sure that even if we solve the music problem, that that's the comment from the police chief, that the police chief is comfortable with the other aspects that are going to be leading to extremely congested. And I say that in the context of being, I'm very supportive of, of uh, Heritage Days and I'm very supportive of the music. My personal preference would be to have a way we can have music on Front Street. And I support what Jerry and the musicians have been doing and bringing in the crowds. I think it's what draws a lot of people there. Um, so I, I think I need more information when you're having conversations, you know, with the police and fire, exactly what is it that's causing the problems? Is it access? Is it congestion? Or, or what? And so, so we can have a more informed discussion because I'm not able to really understand, but I take on 100% faith that they're correct. Well, I don't My only go ahead just to on. respond is the congestion on the sidewalks is worse is the worst next to the uh, the music spot. Absolutely. If you go down towards, um, you know, walking down towards dribbles and yeah, towards all that, that it's, you can walk on the sidewalks fine. It's right Absolutely. where the benches are taking up the street because you lose the ability to walk on the street. Yeah, yeah. It's very, and plus you got little kids there and, and people pushing strollers. It's very, very difficult. Oh, no, no, I, so I, I, I think that agree. that's what they're. Yeah, the other problem is, is that the side uh, sidewalk uh, next to the music store and to the, um, Front Street Gourmet is blocked off completely. Yeah. And the only sidewalk you have is the one that's easterly, which is in front of the Welsh Company. People stand there to watch the concert. They're able to keep a, and so it gets very condensed there. I, I will say that's probably, I don't know. It's, you know, I'm not going to speculate as to what the Chiefs are saying. My assumption is from having been down there, that's the bottleneck. Yeah. And it is a problem. Um, yeah. Can I address? Um, yes. Because I really uh, want to address this, and I did attend Heritage Day, so I'm pretty familiar in response to the concerns expressed by the chief. And you might not recall, but I do, that the fire chief said he would not approve it this year, last year. It's a huge public safety issue. I've never seen anything permitted like that in my experience for a music stage on a main street. And it's not the fact that it's just contained where the peddler booths are and the stage, is all those people, when it gets too crowded on the benches, are going behind the stage 
and that's really the public safety access in terms of a public way because if you're coming Backs in behind. from First Parish, right. you've got all the benches, so they're, you know, positioning to come in. You have right. such tremendous spillover, it's just not a contained area. That's yeah. their concern. It's if okay. everybody was where that area was, that would be fine, but it's spilling all the way okay. behind that. Good. And you just can't get there safely. Right. And I think, um, since I'm very familiar with the Chief's position on this, and this is why we have this review process, yep is they're not saying they're opposed to the music. They're just saying they don't want it set up on Front Street the way it was in the past. So okay. any alternative location or whatever, I know the chief has several ideas, Chief Stewart, as to where it could be ro relocated. Their main concern is they don't want this stage in the middle of Front Street from a public safety point of view. And, okay. and I, have, I support that. Sure, yep. And then I think, it's, I think Mr. Norton made a very good point that it's not up to this board here to figure it out. But, you know, and as John, you said, Claudia, go start trying to figure this out. Basically, right? All right. Um, we should we vote on the, the, the vendors, if I can put it that way? You get that. That so makes sense. So they would have a go forward. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, move the board of selectmen vote to grant a special events permit for heritage days for August 6th, evening only. 7 and 8, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. 2010, and according to all conditions set by the Town of Situate Departments and the Town Administrator. I think that covers it because the, um, the, the clause, according to all conditions set by the Town of Situate Departments, they have not given permission yet for music. So I think that motion should do it. Or you could just say, or I will tack on, exactly. just to make sure it's. Firm, I could say um, uh, Continue this reading. motion. This motion does not um, give permission, or does not apply. This permit does not apply to the music portion of Heritage Days on Front Street. Of on the Front Street. Street. Outdoor, <laughs> outdoor music entertainment sure. permit. Yeah. Okay. Kim, did that make sense? As amended by Mr. Bagnani and Mr. Norton. All in favor? Is there a second, actually? I don't have a second on that. Second. Does anyone else? Seconded by Mr. Norton. Any discussion from the floor? Yes. Actually, um, if you could come up here, Mr. Corsaro, and identify yourself, please. Steve Corsaro, actually Barry McMorrow, who's you know, Citro Music, sort of behind the music festival. Um, I would agree with you that it would be good to hear from the Chiefs with some specificity what the concerns are. Um, last year, they did send a letter out to um, the folks setting up the festival saying, you know, these are the conditions we'd like you to meet, have that stage pushed south of where Alan hits front, removing everything off the uh, street by 6 p.m., making sure the sidewalks are clear. So they articulated some concerns, and they were all addressed, and um, the event went off without incident, as it has for decades. And so this year, when they're saying that they, you know, despite the fact that the criteria that they asked to be met was met and the event went off without incident, um, they're saying, I think in rather general terms, that they consider this a public safety hazard because of the density. And so I'd like for them to articulate um, so that we could respond possibly and, you know, make some adjustments how that section of the event differs greatly from the vendors on the other side. Because one of the things we keep hearing is that it's very difficult to uh, get access to that area if there was a, a you know a public safety issue and and really I guess it's hard to uh, understand how it's more difficult to remove the benches from the middle of the road versus these booths that are set up with all sorts of merchandise in them uh, you've got covers on them so I'd like to have some more specificity from the chiefs on their concerns uh, because again asked them last year they detailed it it was met in the incident I mean the event went off again without incident as it has for decades so, and I also think, you know, Jerry McMorrow, who has been behind the music for decades, is somebody that could help with this discussion. Because I think that the Chiefs, you know, again, they're suggesting to move the music over to Cole Parkway. And I think that there are issues that they haven't thought about that, you know, will show that that's not such a great idea. And so to have a discussion with them, 
and first if they could articulate with some specificity what it is about and maybe we can deal with it and because I really don't I don't know if I see that the density of that block versus the other I mean yes you can get by on some of the sidewalks and all of that but I think that really to, to respond to their concerns it might you know it would be helpful to have more specificity but also you folks are looking for some education and information and I think Jerry could answer a lot of these questions for you so that when you do hear from the chiefs we can get this discussion going what I would propose is to say that set up a meeting with both chiefs uh, Claudia you're, you're the head of that committee subcommittee for it and Steve Jerry you, you, you should be there and you know have the meeting uh, the liaison happens to be me right now I'm happy to partake and, and go to the meeting uh, in conjunction with the chiefs to discuss it um, you know for the reasons why they want to be able to relocate it or the problems in the past or why they want to downsize the location if that's what it is I'm I'm not really sure I just know that they have certainly indicated last year they indicated I know the chief judged it saying no and we ended up doing it despite that uh, but it's always been an ongoing issue for the past three years that I've been up here. Um, and um, it's always been problematic the five years I've been with the Chamber. So I, I, I'd be happy to go with that. I think that's probably the next step. And then, you know, hash it out there and find out and get it from there. Mr. Just, Norton. Just to repeat uh, again, the meeting that's being suggested now is the one that should have been held back in January. This, this discussion we're having tonight should never be taking place. There should have been a solution before you came here tonight. Well, actually, I mean, the way the chief termed it in his letter was that uh, he would request that the event organi organizers investigate the possibility of alternate sites for future Heritage Days events and music festivals, including other areas of the town. This might address problems involving limited parking, traffic, mm -hmm. extended street closures, and concerns of abutters as the harbor becomes more residential. <coughs> okay. So the chamber did that. They've had that discussion, and they've talked about, they've thought about the logistics of moving the music out to the back and are ready to discuss with them why that isn't such a good idea. But I've had, um, I mean, maybe we should have uh, Mark Patterson also as harbor master involved in that discussion because he is a law enforcement official in Cole Parkway located there. Absolutely. Um, he could add some uh, valuable input. But um, I, th I think that, you know, there has been a discussion as requested, but the event organizers really have come to the conclusion that the music really needs to be where it is. And also, as far as the public safety concerns that the chiefs are expressing in general terms, we're just not really able to grasp because there isn't enough specificity or respond to. I mean, they're asking for a discussion to possibly, you know, tweak the event but without some specificity, as they did last year. And so there were changes made. And you know, the, the stage was moved, and the sidewalks were cleared by a certain time. And the streets, I mean, the, the stage is now permitted. The, um, I think in the past, it, it used to be that uh, they used to allow the stage to stay up. And now it has to be built, taken down at the end of the day, rebuilt the next day, taken down by 6 PM. So every year that the chiefs have articulated specific concerns they've all been addressed and again the event has gone off without incident for decades well, so you have to give it this then I think you do Steve that you have to get the chiefs okay at least before I will vote to support it well I, I yeah. do think too that it's you know I understand that but I think also that it's fair to say that they should be able to articulate with oh, I think they will but I'm just saying you're gonna have to get an affirmative uh, nod from them for me to vote for it, I will not vote uh, well, let me for ask the music you. if yeah. if if the chiefs continue with their <coughs> okay. denial. Thank you, so. thank you. We're not going to get into debate, Steve, tonight. But as I said, I think the next step in the process is to get together and talk about it. Um, I, I will say this: it's that may not have been a hitch in the past. But the problem we have is, in the event that there is. It's going to be a lot harder for us up here to have to address the issue. Why didn't you take the advice of your police chief? Why didn't you take the advice of your fire chief? It won't be you. It won't be you. It won't be you. It'll be all five of us sitting up here. So it's been very fortunate. I think we have to listen to them. I think we should have a discussion, a frank discussion. They'll put it on the table. I'm confident about why they have concerns about it. Um, Jerry, quickly, if there's something more you want to add. Make one little point here. Um, the concept of moving the music out there in terms of improved safety access in the event that there's a problem. The problem would probably be in one of the two buildings that are across the street, the Welch Company and the uh, building with goodies, which is yep. also kind of. Yep. 
Let's also understand both of those buildings have modern state-of-the-art fire suppression systems in them now. The likelihood of a major fire is virtually zero. But let's talk about the access if there's a problem. If we had moved the music out to Cole Parkway, instead we would be replacing people that had booths out there would now be shifted to Front Street. We'd be losing parking as well. But in other words, we would now have booths, crafters in front of my store and down to the edge of Remus. In the event that there's a problem, you've got 30 or 40 booths there, you've got people, you've got all sorts of stuff. There is no access for, for vehicles at that point in time. And this concept that they would just run a fire truck over the booths is just a little bit silly. They'd be killed. With the music there, however, that street can be cleared in two minutes. Well, why don't we, why don't we do, I, I'm not trying to, I don't want to debate this tonight, Jerry. I, no, just please, just, I'm the chair, Jerry. You have to give me a second here, okay? That's a discussion I think we should have with the police chief and the fire chief. You can say that, and we could, I understand that. can be done in a matter of two or three minutes. The benches can be cleared and stacked on the sidewalks, and you have total access, since we cleared the intersection of Rivas last year, they could get the Queen Mary down the street there. Okay. I'm not debating that with you. I'm just trying to say that I think that's a discussion. This board right now is not going to make any decisions on that. I think it's better to be able to have this discussion in this room with the, the, the two fire chiefs, um, town administrator maybe, I, myself. I'll be here, in the, at least the four of us, um, and I think that would be better served, okay? Um, is there anything else to add other than I think we should add, vote this for the vendors and then... Um, what I'd like to do is, is have a meeting between now and our next meeting, which will be the 22nd. Is that what it is? So we can have this discussion um, after a meeting in the next two weeks, if that's uh, acceptable to, to you. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, we have a motion. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then if we could coordinate, um, Claudia, I'd like to coordinate with you and the chiefs. Then let's get a meeting set up that's convenient for everybody. And then let's let's have that discussion. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you, folks. Um, moving on to the next discussion item number fifteen. Move the board of selectmen grant sewer betterment deferral ten zero one. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move the board of selectmen grant sewer betterment deferral ten zero two. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, I guess we move on then. Let's move on to the next agenda item, which happens to be agenda item number 16. It's the acceptance of three gifts, in particular three memorial benches on town-owned land. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's up in Minot on Gannett Road, no, Glades Road. Um, in particular, there are three benches. I think they're replacements, if, if I'm correct, or are they two of our replacements? Um, and they have been donated by um, the first one by Elaine um, Murphy um, for Vincent and Grace Morton. And also the second one is from the North Situate Beach Improvement Association. Uh, it is for the twins Mary Elizabeth and Elizabeth Mary and Albert Gordon. Uh, the third one is the merit, um, the applicant, I'm sorry, I'm missing, is it Carol Lips Lipsky? And that is for Mary R. McNamara, in memory of these three granite benches that are supposed to be placed, I guess, right in the Minot Beach my, and Glades Road, right, Kim? Is there a motion for this? Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to accept, on behalf of the Town of Situate, three memorial benches to be placed on town-owned property along Glades Road at Minot Beach. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 No, none, none opposed. No. Can I make one quick comment on yes. that? Um, I just want to uh, say what a great job that Al and his department did on getting these set up both quickly and safely. And the benches look great. I, I uh, we yeah, don't have yeah. one ourselves. It's already up, and um, and about it's his a benches, very oh, yeah. yeah we did one a month or so ago, and um, there's a lot of safety concerns with a bench that that's that is that heavy and and that the town hired the right people to do it properly, so um, it's a very safe, and uh, other than the fact that the bench just looks great. So thank you, Alan, everyone involved in that. Well, moving on to agenda item 17, it's a vote drain leaders license renewal this time. 
Would you like a motion? Yes, Mr. Will Harris. Will the Board of vote to grant the renewal of Drain Lays license for Rosano oh, Davis yeah. Sanitary Pumping, Inc.? Is there a second on that? Second. Seconded by Mr. Murray. Um, any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Uh, moving on to agenda item number 18. It is the acceptance and resignation of Rita M. Rosen. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the resignation of Rita Rosen from the Council on Aging and further the Board thank Ms. Rosen for her dedication to the Council and to the Town of Central. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Norton. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 And also thank you, Ms. Rosen, for your, your, um, your dedication and your uh, um, donation time to the town. Um, moving on to uh, number 19. It's a discussion concerning uh, the selectmen's liaison positions. Mr. Chairman, the first one is the advisory committee, and I've been doing this for the past... Uh, number of years and I think it started when I was chairman uh, you know back <laughs> one of the times t eight or nine years ago and I just kept doing it I don't know necessarily that it's that it's my liaison or should it be the chairman's liaison uh, <laughs> and I only say that because I think the chairman may you know have input have input a bit you know be, be should be better informed on all the issues than a member should be so I just Toss that out at the chairman. If we would like to make a decision to make that a chairman's appointment, that's fine with me. Uh, I'll do it. Continue doing it. It's up to. I have no problems assuming that. If uh, the fine. rest of the board members uh, have no, I think it makes sense for it to be a chair position. So you, so first of all, it does stick with the chairman, and then secondly, it's a big responsibility. A lot of meetings. It doesn't wear one person down well, for years and years. Any any individual member can go anytime they want, and and and. Uh, if there's an issue that uh, that they're interested in, they could go. But it probably should be the chairman's role. It makes sense. Okay. It does, Joe. All right, yours. So I guess um, that's mine, folks. Um, Animal Control Board. Sean, did I, you, want, I, you want to do that? Or you want me to do? No, that? I'll I'll continue. Right, and I'll stay on that after. Okay, sure. School one. All right. So that is Sean. Midway through the year, Tony and I made a little swap. No. Oh. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, beautification Commission. I'll continue doing that. Okay. Are you sure, Joe? Uh, yeah, I can hear Because that usually is the clerk's. No, I think no. that uh, you could. Uh, <laughs> Joe wants to take credit for all those islands. <laughs> Board of Health. I don't, I don't get credit for They do such a great job. I just hate to hand that over to anybody else. Board of Health. <laughs> Mr. Harris, are you Yes, still? I'd like to keep it if I could. Okay. Bylaw Review Commission. I'll continue to do that if nobody else wants it. Sure. Okay, Cable Television Grant Committee. That, that committee actually has been changed in title, and I've been sort of doing it. Isn't that, what's the new title of it, Tricia, do you remember? Um, Television. Advisory Committee? Advisory Committee. Advisory Committee? Yeah, and I've, I've been doing it. So, Tony, if you. Okay, so, okay, Mr. So Murray yep. has the Cable Television Advisory Committee. The Capital Planning Committee. I'll do that one. Okay. okay. And the uh, Council on Disabilities. Commission, do you want to do that? Or you want someone else to do it? You know, um, if somebody would like to, uh, not that I'm trying to, I'd be happy to do it, but you know, I'll probably have some other committees. Do they meet on certain particular nights, or is it? As needed. All right. I'll do it. I'll do it. All right. Good. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, Mr. Norton, Community Preservation Committee. Yeah, I'll, I'll still keep doing that if the board's okay with that as well as the uh, next one. Okay, and Conservation Commission. Mr. Murray looks to continue, okay. Council on Aging. I'll continue unless someone else wants it. Mr. Harris, very good. Financial Forecast Committee. I'll continue with that one, if you want. I'm gonna shadow you on that one too, Tony, so that, yeah. as a backup. I look forward if to it. If you need me to go, I'll be happy to. Uh, Historical Commission. I'll still stick with that, if it's okay. Mr. Murray, Housing Authority. Joe. Joe, you yes, I'll continue doing that if you okay. don't mind. The Plymouth County Advisory Board. Again, I'll continue doing that if you don't mind. Skip planning. public uh, planning, Joe. Public uh, Buildings Commission. Oh, I, sp I did skip planning, didn't I? Planning Board. Do you want to keep doing that? I'll keep doing that. That's fine. If that's okay, unless there are others. I think it's great. Um, the Public Buildings Commission. I'll continue. Mr. Harris. Recreation Commission. Same with that. Mr. Harris. 
the Renewable Energy Committee. I think Paul still wants to do that, don't you? I yeah, I do. So. Yeah, I, I vote like Paul. So. I can't make the motion, but I'd vote him on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Paul, if you're out there, you're on. And I, I uh, shadow him on that a little bit. I st I, I'm on all the emails and things, so it's okay. good. Um, the school committee. I'll stick with that. Okay. You want to? I'll, I'll help. You, you took it all last year. You know, feel free to call me, and I'll step in, Tony. Okay. All right. The Situate Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'll continue on that. Uh, South Shore Coalition. I'm fine. Still being lead. Perfect. Or, or Seoul. We'll make it Seoul. Seoul. Just one. Be fine. Okay. Uh, Street Acceptance Committee. I think that is mine, gentlemen. Isn't that? Yes, yep. yeah, the chair. chairs, right? So that's yep. mine. And um, town web town web page. Anybody interested? I'll do it if you okay. want to get rid of it. Mr. Vignani. Um, Traffic Rules and Regulations Committee. I think Joe and I have a nice balance there. We, we, we both kind of cover it as needed. All right. Fine with me. The Water Resource Committee. I, oh, sorry. What? Did you want to, yeah. Joe, did you, we were, did you want to do Water Resource? No, no, no I think it's Mr. Murray's. He's <laughs> <laughs> just having fun here? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, Water Resources and, uh, I seem to go in pairs here. Water Resources and, and Waterways, I'd, I'd be pleased to I was going to ask for the Waterways. I was going to take a chance. <laughs> yeah, okay. Everybody yeah. wants to be with the It's getting pretty waterways. deep here. <laughs> it's getting pretty deep here. <laughs> you just want to be able to say yeah, Waterways right. every meeting like I do. Um, and the ZBA, which I'd be happy to continue with unless somebody else <laughs> wants to. Um, the one thing I didn't notice is, do we do the North, is it the North? South River, uh, the, yeah, Joe does. No, North River Commission. Commission. North River Commission. Is that something we point? That's when we do when we do like the the that fence separate? sitters and the later on the, stuff. the appointments. Yeah, it's appointments. Two fence viewer. That's okay. it. That's all right. <laughs> what I say. Fence. All right. Fence, fence sitter sitting on the fence. Bar is bark. That no, I meant bar the bark wear of barks or whatever it is. Measure of lumber. And thank you. Okay. Moving on to item I uh, agenda item number 19A. Uh, this is a vote notice of use restriction concerning Pier 44 property. In this instance, I'd like to again pass this over to the vice chair. And I will pass it over to the town administrator. This document for your vote and execution this evening is in all respects identical to what was available at town meeting for the use of the MBTA mitigation fund for the purchase of Pier 44. And of particular interest is the specificity related to how the money is solely for the use of recreational and educational purposes and any improvements related thereto. So it's something you've all seen before, but our closing is tentatively scheduled for June 15th, and this is part of the document attachments for the closing. If it, um, it's okay with the vice chair, I just would like to explicitly refer to what Tricia said and just read this very brief paragraph here about public use right. because she says it really is the, the, the nuts and the bolts of it here. Uh, the town will use the premises for the public purpose of open space and land preservation for outdoor recreation by and education of the general public. Public use of the premises shall include but not be limited to access to the harbor front and a view of the harbor. The town shall prevent any use or change that would materially impair or interfere with the outdoor recreational, educational, or public access values of the premises. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, further discussion from the board? Motion? Move the board of selectmen vote the attached notice of use restriction for the Pier 44 property. Second. Motion to be made and seconded. Discussion from the board? Discussion from the floor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That was unanimous. Mr. Danahy. Standing. Thank you. Including himself. All right. Moving on to other business. And seeing that it's almost quarter of nine, <laughs> I'll go first. And um, I don't have any. I'll Moving to Mr. Second. Norton. I don't have any. Mr. Harris. Like three of us. I don't know which one of the two I want to go next. <laughs> uh, we'll start with Mr. Vignani. Uh, two quick things. Uh, first, got a few complaints about the rotary and the grass getting cut there so if we can just tell Al to bug the state to oh they cut it today to him oh, did, did they cut it, it today yeah no. it looks like a bad haircut it's unbelievable it's horrible it's the geese what is uh, the next terrible. step to getting Kennedy's to take that over <laughs> Kennedy's is working with the state the state has about 9,000 different hoops to jump through in order to ink that agreement 
because um, Kennedy's wants to do plantings and there's certain height and benchmark restrictions. I just happened to talk with Al about it today because I noticed it was getting high over the weekend. Um, so they're still working very hard. It's just needing to okay, So it is still in the works. It is, and they're still very started when I was chair for years ago. Great. And the second thing is just a, there's a, a couple of g really good golf tournaments coming up that I just want to make anyone that's watching this aware of. The police are having their golf tournament coming up in the next um, couple months, and so is the Course Foundation, which I think all, all of us played in last year, and it's a great event for a great uh, cause. So if you're interested in playing golf, um, I'm sure you can get to both those websites and find out the details. Thank you, Ms. Mignani. Mr. Murray. Done. Very good. Should have gone to Mr. Murray. Um, <laughs> moving on to the next agenda item, uh, correspondence. And seeing there happens to be one, one. I think one. Two. Two, actually. These are the two. Okay. So this is the second one, right? Yep. Uh, the first one is uh, written to the Department of Public Works on the new bike path on, on uh, New Kent Street. Um, I'm writing on behalf of this uh, Cliffside Condominium Association on New Kent Street. All members of the association sent a sincere note of thanks and appreciation to the department, its staff, the Town Conservation Committee, all workers, engineers, contractors, planners, and selectman Joseph Norton, who have all been instrumental in planning, constructing, protecting, and landscaping the new bike path in and around our property. It really is a tremendous job and adds significantly to our neighborhood and to the town of Situate. It is an effort uh, that we are very appreciative and proud of, and so working in complement with the town, we continue to do our civic duty to keep the new pike path near our properties clean of litter and generally maintained. We also want to send a note of special thanks to Director of the Conservation Committee, Mark Stewart, who worked with us through the preservation of pine trees at the front of our property on New Kent Street. That and the reseeding of our entry fence at the front street is greatly appreciated. And this is from uh, George Newman of the Cliffside Condominium Association. Um, the second one is to the Board of Selectmen from John Murphy, Chairman of the Situate Waterways Commission. Gentlemen, on behalf of the Situate Waterways Commission, I'd like to ask the Board of Selectmen to recognize the efforts of Patrick Doyle. Patrick is a 15-year-old Boy Scout from Situate. This young man volunteered uh, for the monofilament line reclamation project sponsored by Boat US and the North and South River Watershed Association. This endeavor asked for volunteers to find sponsors and to install collection containers for used fishing line to be discarded. He has collected over 40 miles of fishing line, helping local animals and marine species from potential entanglement. Patrick is committed to the project until all selected collection points are installed. To date, Situate collected points have been installed at the Town Pier, Tack Factory Pond, Greenbush Reservoir, Conservation Park, the Belson Bait and Tackle. Patrick Doyle's efforts to play the true community spirit that makes Situate such a great place to be part of. Thank you, Patrick, for your uh, outstanding service to the community from John Murphy, Chairman of the Situate Waterways Commission. Mr. Chairman, do you think the board could, uh, uh, over your signature, write the Patrick uh, just a note? Acknowledging the fact that we got this when he did that, I think it's an outstanding effort. I, I, I would agree. I think that's appropriate for what he's done. Yep. Thank you. Kim, if you can remind me, we will do that. Uh, all right, moving on to the next. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the minutes of March 3rd, 2009. Oh. Hold on one second. Just make sure, Kim, you're all set on that one. Okay. All right, there's a sure. second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Sorry. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, moving on to the third, uh, 23rd um, it is um, executive session, and we're going into executive session, folks, to discuss um, um, litigation. And if we were to discuss it in open meeting, it may have a detrimental effect on the litigation or the position of this town. So having said that, I'd accept the motion. We will board a selectman vote to enter executive session for purposes of pending litigation and not return to regular session this evening. Is there a second? Second. All right. I guess then we need a roll call vote. Aye. 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 Aye.